Hey, welcome back to Metroball Grid. My name is Andre. Thanks so much for tuning in. Today, we have a new deck die for you in the standard format, and I'm really excited about this one. This one's been a fair bit of tinkering to build something that looks a bit ridiculous, but I promise you, it's a heck of a lot of fun. This is Tech Tree, and it's a World Tree Arasana list of 60 massive cards. And so far for my testing, it has been way more consistent, has a lot of creative expression, and it's been a lot more fun than I could have imagined. Again, this is based around World Tree, a card that came out in the Parhelion cycle. We have saw it for a while when it came out and then eventually led to some bans and then it kind of disappeared. It's a very flexible and exciting card that allows you to trash your installed cards to go search your deck for other installed cards, installing them clicklessly at a reduction of cost of three. Gives you a lot of flexibility to pull out wild combos, gives you a lot of consistency, and that's why we end up with this massive toolbox of some of the highest influence cards in the whole game, and we just push ourselves forward. We got some gameplay coming up again. We played a whole bunch of games across a Sunday afternoon testing through this deck and had a lot of fun. If you want to just jump ahead and watch the gameplay, there are timestamps in the description below. Please go ahead and do that. Otherwise, we're going to be spending a couple minutes right now going through the list, explaining how it works, some basic play patterns, why every single card is there, and then talking about some cards we tested in the deck and should go in the deck and some other options. So if you want to know more about the deck list, hang out. We're going to talk about it for sure. Real quick, though, if you want to take a second and you appreciate this sort of content, if you would like to leave a like on the video, leave a comment, share this with a friend, subscribe to the channel. There's a lot of ways you can help the Metro Ball Grade grow. All right, let's dive in. First thing I want to say really quickly that this deck is 60 cards. That can be pretty overwhelming, but very uniquely, this is actually 55 Null Signal Games cards. That means that if you're a player that owns the entire NSG card pool, if you want to proxy some FFG cards, if you don't have the FFG cards, you only need to print out five cards to make this thing work. And you can trade some of these cards out for sure. Only a couple of them are actually quite necessary. But in terms of approachability, this thing is slightly more approachable than it works. 55 NSG cards is actually a pretty high percentage here. Now, let's talk about the main object here. This is World Tree. It's a lot of people's favorite Netrunner card for a while now, but we haven't seen a lot of this. When it came out, it made a huge splash. This thing costs six credits. It takes up a massive two MU. And again, it says the first time a turn you make a successful run, trash one of your things to go get another thing of the same type, reducing its cost by three. That's a lot of value. That's a lot of flexibility. And then this card kind of came out on the scene pretty quickly with World Tree Woo. Now, this deck was wild. It was a massive 65 cards, but it only played a single tin copy of World Tree. Now, the beauty of Cabanessa Wu's ability is she allowed you to search your deck for a program and just install it onto the table with a reduction of cost. And while that program would remove itself from the game if it stayed around too long, as long as you could flicker it in and out or reinstall it or do any sort of shaper magic, you were largely getting your world tree down on the table as soon as turn one, if not turn two. Then you use this engine to produce programs from your deck with Cabanessa. You'd world tree them into other programs, push yourself forward with this massive, just a barrage of value, selling things to the Aesop spawn shop. And it was kind of pretty wild. A lot of corporations, while there was some interesting play into the deck and the deck, mind you, it was also you could produce a five credit endurance. And at that time, that was pretty good when you wanted to run once a turn with the world tree. This thing was just so much value that a lot of corporations, if they couldn't run or couldn't win very quickly, were going to be far behind the runner sooner than later. Now, the way that they addressed this is they actually ended up banning Cabanessa Wu. She's been banned for a while now. Endurance has been since banned from that as well. And once this sort of deck got banned out, world tree almost entirely stopped seeing play in the standard format. It's been largely a pet card. I think people have been playing it still in startup, but it was a card that I was excited to return to in the standard format because I didn't know what it could do outside of Cabanessa Wu and then a whole bunch of cards that rotated alongside it. And this is what we come up with, and it does some interesting things. Uh, specifically, I wanted to use World Tree not only as a barrage of value, which it very much definitely is, but I wanted to use it to play some of the highest influence cards and be able to search our deck to install some massive influence resources and hardware. That's actually something really notable about Shaper is that Shaper inherently can largely be defined by its ability to search its deck for the right program for the right type. That is not something exactly new, but World Tree allows Shaper to have the ability to go find a five influence, very unique resource and install it when and if they need it with some consistency. Same for hardware. And I thought that would be super exciting. And that was kind of the base tenant of this deck. And this is how it comes together. So we're going to be talking about every single card in the deck list, but first we're going to start by mentioning our game plan because our game plan is largely a three step process, which is slightly different than you might think it is. Now, step one, when you have this deck, what are you mulliganing for? You're actually not mulliganing for World Tree, and this might be a bit counterintuitive, but our goal is actually not to get the World Tree down as soon as possible. Counter to the Cabanessa Wu decks, um, if we get the World Tree down, we kind of need something to sell to the World Tree. And largely what we want to be selling to the World Tree is actually resources. 
The Cabanessa Wu deck is really good at selling programs and making them into other programs. And while we are definitely going to do that into the mid to late game, there's actually not a lot of programs right now in Netrunner that I would deem as tempo positive that if we wanted to go out of the way to produce them would actually push us forward. Now, these were not really legal at the time when Cabanessa Wu was around playing World Tree, but the sort of cards like Cash, this is an old Neverner card, but if I could produce this for my deck clicklessly for free, it just gains you three credits. And that's a nice way to trade a program and push yourself forward. Another arguably older card is Sahasrara, where getting this from our deck quickly would be nice because then we can sell our programs cheaper. But this is the basic idea is right now in Netrunner, there is almost no programs that are tempo positive. So if we want to set ourselves up and push ourselves out forward. The biggest thing that we want to start world training is with resources. And that is step one is actually set up the deck with resources. We're playing 16 resources and a lot of them are very generic good value resources that have a shelf life. And that's a really big thing here. I'd rather have an opening hand that has an Earth Rise Hotel and a daily cast. And then eventually in the next two to three turns, we're hoping to draw into a world tree. And then once we've set up, once we've got our economy, once we have these resources that are on their way to show themselves out, the daily cast with two credits left on it, the Earth Rise Hotel with one power counter left on it, the Telerik with only three credits left on it. That's when we go to step two, which is produce the world tree. Because those are the targets that we're going to use to get more card draw, to get more money, to push ourselves forward. And that is actually step one. Get your resources down, get your economy up. Step two is produce the world tree. Okay, how do we produce the world tree? It's a 60 card deck. We have three copies of world tree. This card isn't unique. And there are some instances where you might install two of them. Mind you, they do take up two MU, but we want to produce one of them. Now, with three copies of world tree and a 60 card deck, the chance of having world tree in your opening hand is about 23%, says the hypergeometric calculator. Now, I wouldn't heavily mulligan into the world tree. It's more important that you have the resource package first, but we have actually six cards from our deck that are functionally world tree draws. Firstly, of course, the world tree itself. If we install that and draw that on turn two, turn three, we're off to the races, pay it for six, make a run, we're good to go. But then the other card, of course, is self-modifying code. This is pretty expensive. Admittedly, if we pay six credits plus the two credit premium from the world tree, we're paying eight credits for the world tree. But we're getting down the world tree consistently and it's saving us three credits on the turn it comes down. So we do start to make our money back immediately. Another really good target with this deck is overclock. Again, if we make an overclock run, we can even use Arasana. We haven't mentioned her ability yet. But we can use Arasana to clicklessly install the self-modifying code mid run, then spend those credits to make it into the world tree. We can get the world tree down relatively quickly and relatively cheaply with six targets, three SMCs and three world trees. The chance of opening with either an SMC and a World Tree is about 43%. And by the time we've drawn two cards after our opening hand, we have above a 50% chance of finding one of these. And the card draw in this deck is actually really good. Opening with an Earthrise, opening with a Nuka means that we'll be drawing cards consistently. And in no matchup have I struggled to get a World Tree down by turn three at the latest if we've really wanted to. And that's kind of step two here. Find the World Tree once you have your, uh, your resources to get rid of. Find it, get it down. Finally, step three is pop off. It's, it's honestly that simple is once you have your world tree down, you just want to be running once a turn and it's trading some value forward into other value. At first, it'll be resources into resources. Eventually, you might pull out a key piece of hardware and then we're going to be trading our programs into the right breakers, into our pressure pieces, into multi-access, getting rid of some of our Trojans that don't scale well into the late game and then just getting some good value, some good utility and answering bespoke board states with the giant toolbox deck of 60 cards. Let's run through all the cards and talk about these like world tree chains of what goes into what. Uh, and they're pretty straightforward. It's not that complicated. You don't have that many options. The resources are all relatively simple. They give you card draw, they give you money, or it's a world tree chain finisher, which is just the last part of the chain. We have like two of those. So firstly, the first resources we almost always get is a five influence resource. It is the beautiful class act. I was so excited to put this into the deck because it's a five influence card that's so impactful. Because for the rest of the game, the first time we draw, we get an extra card draw and then we get to put one of those cards on the bottom of the deck. So the fact that we can get this consistently with one credit by trading some resource that's almost on its way out, we can get good mass card draw on that turn to ensure we're finding more things to world tree away. But also now we're getting filtered card draw for the rest of the game, which definitely helps with a 60 card deck. The coolest thing about Class Act that I was so surprised to find out is how naturally good its scry type ability is with World Tree. With World Tree, there's a lot of cards that you'd actually rather not draw. Earthrise Hotel is obviously really good in the early game, but for once you get your World Tree down, you'd much rather install it from your deck clicklessly for one credit with World Tree discount than spend a click and four credits from your hand. That's the beauty of Class Act. 
Anytime you draw a card and it's Earthrise Hotel in some operation, just put the Earthrise Hotel on the bottom of your deck. Even on the bottom of the deck, World Tree will still find it. You'll be shuffling your deck a lot regardless, and you're never going to be drawing it into any of the cards that you'd rather install clicklessly for three credits less from your deck. This turned out to be such a massive synergy that I didn't expect once I was just excited to put a five influence consistency card, but it works so dang well with the archetype. I would not play without this. It's really great. This is often the first resource we'll get down. And from that point on, we're just trading whatever card draw or econ resources to the next card draw or econ resource. Daily cast is just really good. On its own, it's a click for five credits, but with World Tree, you'll install it for three, you'll take six from it, and then you'll make a successful run and you'll just trade it into potentially the next daily cast. That is another six credits. And then you'll trade that into potentially the third daily cast. And at that point, we've spent one click and three credits to gain 18. And then we still have another World Tree target. And that is the massive thing about the early game with this deck is that you can set up so quickly where we spend one click to install an Earthrise Hotel, which becomes a second Earthrise Hotel, which becomes a third Earthrise Hotel, which becomes potentially a Nuka. And we just get so much card draw and so much value. Just install your thing and sell it for the next thing. Ask yourself, do I need money now or do I need card draw now? And then just get one of the options we have in those camps. Sell that card once it's on its way out. Nuka is basically a free diesel and then it goes. Earthrise Hotel is four card draw and then it goes. Teller Contract is six credits and then it goes. And of course, Daily Cast is six credits and then it goes. You won't be drawing these often. You're going to get them clicklessly. It is just so much value and it sets it up so quickly. I'm actually genuinely surprised in most matchups where we're 10 turns in and I look at the deck and there's only like 20 cards left in the deck. And that's because you do just draw so much and pull cards out of your deck so consistently with World Tree that you kind of fly, that the 60 card deck doesn't feel as clumsy as sometimes you might imagine it will. Now, notably, and there are two resources in here that are a bit different. The first one is Urban Art Vernissage. We are playing Arasana and we are playing Trojans. Inherently with World Tree, we want to be running once a turn anyways, and we try to make a big effort in this deck to make Arasana make sense. You could argue that you could play World Tree with just about any shaper with some value-based identity, but Arasana is really cool anyways, because with Arasana's ability, not only are we able to install programs clicklessly that we don't care if they get trashed because we're going to be World Treeing them away, but we also have a Trojan engine. The Trojan engine allows us to be aggressive early and crack through some early ice with Slab Vandal, so we're consistently putting pressure on. But also in the mid game, we can use those Trojans once they're not valuable anymore and sell them away to World Tree later on. But that's a big thing with Arasana. Once a turn, we're running anyways. We're going to install a Trojan, ideally for free or for cheap. We're going to get a World Tree. And then every turn, we're going to return the Trojans back to hand and gain two credits for even more cheaper installs. We have a lot of reasons in this deck to run, be running once a turn. It was largely designed around that. And Arasana is actually a really nice way to get more value. So this Urban Vern Art Vernissage is nice to get down. You don't need it super early unless you have one of your Trojans. We have about five Trojans in the deck. You can always search for them with the World Tree if you really want them. But it's a really nice value reason. And eventually you will get this down probably at the end of one of your value chains. The other card that caps off one of the value chains is the Artist. I honestly haven't played this card before. It's not a very good card. Four credits for this install is way too much. But installing it from your deck for one credit is fine. Its abilities on it are okay. We have a lot of things to install from hand anyways. Now, the bottom action eventually won't be a great action to use because we're going to be installing things for free with DZMZ and Urban Art Vernissages, but it's not bad, and it's nice to get a card out at the end once you've gone through most of your resources. You'll just draw this and get this down for one credit, and it's, it's fine. It's okay. You click for two credits every once in a while, you install a card. It's just some long-lasting value, which we kind of do appreciate. That's the resources. It's really simple. It's our first place that we stop off to make sure that they're ticking down. And once they're about to get down, we pop off with World Tree and we go. Next up is hardware. And hardware is really interesting right now. And it's a bit of a bummer in some ways because currently in the format, there's not a lot of this like disposable hardware that has a shelf life. The same way that there's a lot of resources that have a shelf life. I'd argue Airblade is the closest to it right now. The issue with Airblade is like, I don't think I would play it in my local meta, but there's definitely a lot of metas where it's quite good. Preventing net damage is good. On encounter text is good. And once this rollerblade is down to its last battery charge, then you just, you know, world tree it into something else. We don't exactly have anything like this in the deck. So trading hardware to hardware, there's a lot of good reasons still to do it, but you have to be a bit more thoughtful because there's not a lot of things that are just going to show themselves out. Firstly, to stick to that idea that we can play cool synergistic packages that are high influence, but only play one singleton copies of them and get them consistently. We're playing Knob Curry. 
You've probably seen a lot of this if you've been playing standard lately. It is the cornerstone of all the virus anarchists, and we get away with playing one copy of our deck and getting it down in every single game, usually clicklessly from our deck for two credits. And this is again the joy of World Tree, where we can now tutor hardware, which is something that's uniquely special to World Tree. So this gives you three MU. Now the MU is only for viruses. The deck does have a bit of an MU issue. You need to get more MU into this deck, I reckon. When I played the deck list, I actually had less MU than this posted list. We'll talk about that in a second. But we have three viruses, if I'm not mistaken, so that MU will get used up by the viruses. But it's not the most important MU to get down early. You have to get actual MU. And then again, sticking to the idea that we're doing once per turn, it has a really powerful ability that allows us to put a virus counter on a virus. We want to be running once a turn anyways because of World Tree, because of all the other stuff we've got going on. So why not put a virus counter on a virus that puts off pressure? It's a really good package. It's synergistic with what we want to do, and it's just really nice in World Tree. The other hardware we have, we have three simul chips. Just obviously a very good shaper card. It gives us flexibility. If we trash one of our programs to World Tree, we can get it back in the late game. You can replay the same self modifying codes. You can throw out early programs you have in your starting hand that you just don't want to afford to install right now. Just throw them out, simul chip them back later. I generally wish we had one or two more recursion cards in this list, but the slots are pretty difficult. But simul chip is quite powerful in shaper, and there's a lot of flexibility with this unique card. Next up, we just have some MU. And when I originally played this list, I had three copies of DZMZ Optimizer. MU is actually really tight in this deck because the MU we get from our console is only for viruses. And you'll notice once you get a World Tree down and one Trojan, you're struggling to play an SMC, which is another two MU card on top of the World Tree. So having some cheap early MU is really good. We have a lot of things to install, so DZMZ does help with that, especially if we're installing our Trojans over and over again. And since I played this deck a bit in the first game, you'll notice I have none of them. I started adding more and more Cyberdelias. This card is a bit expensive. It's you can go search us from your deck for free by trashing a DZ in the mid game to get this down. You do have to watch out for the checkpoint that makes sure for a second, if you lose the DZ, you're not over MU before this thing comes in. But this thing's really good in the mid to late game anyways, when you're running once a turn anyways, why not get paid with some of the most efficient breakers in the format? And I do actually really value the economy on this. There's a lot of games where a single Cyberdelia gives you five, six, seven credits, and you can get it installed from your deck clicklessly. I played with one of them. One game I played with zero of them. Definitely want to play with more of them because the deck is quickly gated by MU. There's also a neutral two cost MU card that you can play T400 Memory Diamond. You could play that too as well. But I do like the late game value proposition of an Econ card. That's also an MU card because at some point you stop installing stuff and you don't actually need the DZs as much as you need the MU. That's hardware. That's straightforward. Speaking of straightforward events, no surprises here. Just three of of all the most generic basic stuff to make us as consistent as possible. No surprises. Create up for money. Sure gamble for money. Dirty laundry for money. We're running once a turn anyways. Why the heck not? We have diesel for card draw. It's great in the early game. You need to find that world tree. You need to find your resources. And then finally overclock, which is good to get your world tree down with SMC. It's good to use the breakers. It's good to trash upgrades. It's just four credits and a run functionally is very quite good. And now we have to talk about the programs. This is where things get much more interesting because on the left side of the deck list, it's a lot of things that are three ofs. And it's just daily cast becomes daily cast becomes daily cast becomes Nuka, right? Doesn't really matter the order you do it. Just get what you need when you need it, whatever makes sense. But with the programs, this is a lot more creative and there's a lot more expression. Shaper is largely defined by its ability to get the right program for the right situation. And we have a lot of singleton programs, which you have to pull at the right time for the situation. This is where things can get a bit more interesting. Now, we talked about, unfortunately, how none of these programs are tempo positive. So as opposed to an Aesop's Pawn Shop deck that wants to get programs out of their deck just to trash them and move themselves forward, we're more often than not getting the right program for the right situation. And our programs, I think, are divided in about, I think, four camps, and we're going to go through them one at a time. Firstly. Let's talk about the Trojan camp. We are playing Arasana, and Arasana lets us clicklessly install a program. If it's a Trojan, it won't be trashed at the end of the run. Mind you, you will install a bunch of non-Trojans using Arasana's ability because it's just going to be the SMC popped or it's going to be sent off to the world tree. So that's kind of really cool. But we are going to be running some amount of Trojans just to make sure we have early pressure, that we're getting two credits a turn off of our uh, Vernissage, and eventually in the late game, they give us some good value and some, some good pressure. So we're playing three copies of Slap Vandal. It's really nice to have these in your opening hand. This is a really nice one. It allows us to pressure remote servers and we can face check. If you're ever panicked, you install this from your hand. You break the one subroutine that matters, the end of the run, the thing that trashes your board. And it gives you some reach because we have to put off pressure. We can't just set, sit back and set up. You also want to play the game of Netrunner and force the corporation to slow down and spend their money. 
This thing's really good. And then of course, because we're playing World Tree in the mid game where you actually have your breakers down, you don't need this thing. Just World Tree it into a program that you need that continues to set you up. So I actually really like playing our Asana because her ability fires consistently when you're playing the Trojans. Other Trojans we have, I think we only have two more. We have one copy of Cuban. This is just a nice late game option. In the early game, you can install it clicklessly to make sure you're pushing yourself forward. But in the late game, when you have your breakers up, you're getting two credits off of something that you're probably getting Cyberdelia money and you're using some of the most efficient breakers. I think the first game that we're going to watch coming up, I did not value getting the Cubon back onto the table fast enough because this is two credits a turn, full stop. That is really good. I don't know if you want more than them because you're not breaking ice too early, but getting the one Cubon and making sure you can put it back onto the table in the mid to late game is quite nice. And finally, we have Peach Eschon. Peach Eschon is our ability that we can get extra clicks during runs. This is a very useful card in certain board states. The biggest thing, like a lot of our Asana decks, is our multi-axis is Conduit. And Conduit is a card that you want to run R&D a lot and put off a lot of pressure. And if we can run R&D super cheap, uh, ideally with Cubon and then Cyberdelius can help. If we get the click back, that means we can be running R&D for six clicks a turn, sometimes seven clicks a turn. And that is a scary way to close the game off. I feel like in the upcoming games, there's a lot of games where I could have transitioned to do conduit pressure sooner than I play control in the remote server. And that is something worth keeping in mind. I do think you can pop off and I've played some other games where the R&D pressure comes incredibly fast when you can produce things like Peach Chan or Conduit with the World Tree. And it can be quite a surprise for the corporation. Next up, let's talk about our breakers. Nothing flashy here at all. We're playing the fixed strength shaper breaker package you've seen in just about everything. We have a buzzsaw for code gates, doesn't deal with high strength stuff. Cleaver for barriers, doesn't deal with high strength stuff. Echelon for sentries, doesn't deal with high strength stuff until the late game. And then of course, one copy of Turbine. The beautiful thing about all these breakers is they cost four or three. So they're just perfect for bringing in uh, eventually with your uh, your world tree. The idea is that, OK, I don't need my slap vandal anymore. Let's make the slap vandal a cleaver. Fantastic. You've done that for free by making a successful run on R&D or archives, whatever you need to do. And it's really great. The ability that you can pull turbine for one credit if and when you need it is much better than SMC into uh, turbine for six credits. And that's a huge difference with the power of world tree here. Again, you're going to need all your MU here. So you're going to set up play more than one Cyberdelia. Uh, but once you have that late game breaker suite, you're breaking most dice for pennies. And that's really important when you want to be running again once a turn. Finally, this is a bridge between the virus package and the breaker package. But we have Amakua. This is the one influence flex slot that I'm not convinced should be Amakua, but I had some good reason to play Amakua. We want to be running once a turn anyways, and the ability to produce Amakua, this is actually one of the few programs that I would consider producing quickly. If we're going to be running an R&D and archives, why not trade one of our programs with the world tree to Amakua? So every turn, if we're not stealing or trashing off of a central server or off a remote server, we're also generating a legitimate breaker that the corporation has to be afraid of. Right now, there is a lot of virus hate in the format. We also, mind you, have Knob Kree, of course, to charge this thing up even faster. I would argue that it's OK, but we probably don't need this. I feel like Slap Vandal was usually our early pressure that bridges us to the mid to late game Breaker Suite package that you could play a lot of other one influence cards that might be a bit more interesting and a bit more meta tuned than this one. I'll show some examples in the later, but it's not a bad spot at all. Amaku is obviously very good. We want to be running once a turn. Let's talk about the viruses because we have that three virus MU we want to fill up and we have some really strong stuff. This is the last big splash of influence. This is imp and this thing turned out to be so great. Right now, this deck, as you might notice, it has a lot of value, but it doesn't have a lot of pressure. We have one multi axis card, which is conduit, which we will produce very quickly if we want to. But that's the only thing that we want to do. So if we're making a lot of runs, we kind of need to make sure that we're making more pressure against the corporation than just single axis is. And so the ability for you to produce imp from the world tree, let alone this thing will never run out of virus counters because of the beauty of Knob Curry, you can produce this at instant speed when the run is successful and you'll still be able to use it on the same run it's been world treed in. From that point forward, the corporation can't just let that uniced HQ against, uh, against a shaper who's putting off not a lot of pressure, running R&D, trashing assets, trashing agendas with defensive text. This thing is so good. And you'll notice that in so many games, I put this down to the corporation's like, oh, crap. I can't play too slow because it's a shaper engine, but I have to not be too greedy about my ice placement on the remote server because I'll get hammered on centrals. This thing is so much fun and you get this sort of like aggressive fire shaper with a world tree value package. I again, this is the reason I want to play world tree is so we can get down imp knob curry consistently in every matchup. Imp is a heck of a card with simul chip. You can flicker it so you can use it twice a turn. There's a lot of flexibility here. Just a very powerful virus. Next up, 
We have, of course, we talked about this before. We have the conduit. This is our win condition. If you pull it clicklessly with the world tree and you get knob Kree to fire on top of it, very important world tree and knob Kree can work in the same successful run as long as you do the world tree first. You won't see additional cards because you didn't spend the click on the card itself. But the fact that you can produce one of the most powerful R&D pressure cards from your deck clicklessly for one credit is really, really cool. And there's a lot of games where we closed off by Conduit and the Conduit Threat. And with Knob Kree, Peach Sean, this accelerates. The other virus we have in the deck is Polongi. It's cool. Pay attention in a couple games upcoming because I always forgot that we had Polongi in the deck and it gives you some flexibility. It's nice with Knob Kree because you can always recharge it. But the idea is that some of the pesky sentries you can break with a buzzsaw and that might be cheaper. If you get the buzzsaw down and you're missing the cleaver, that's OK. You have the Polongi. You can install it from hand. It can show itself out with our Asana's ability. That's OK. I think there's a couple of games where I missed that this was an option that solved some of the problems ahead of me, but it's a really nice anti-rush card. And abstractly with Knob Kree, you can go infinite off this and that's OK. I'd argue that you probably don't need this. You can cut the slot. You can play another virus. I think there's a really cool inclusion we could uh, suggest. But at the end of the day, it's kind of a midpoint between Slap Vendel and actually just setting up your breaker suite. And maybe we should just set up our breaker suite. So it's nice, but probably not necessary. And that's the virus suite. I think the last cards we have are just like some of the kind of interesting tech cards. We have one copy of Parisha which allows you to have two credits worth of value trashing assets in any deck that's asset spamming out. You want to get this on the table as soon as possible with an SMC with a world tree. And in any of the matchups where it's done enough work or you don't need it, you just world tree it into something else, saving money, installing this clicklessly with Arasana. Just go get another better program. So it's nice to have the tech slot here. We already have imp into asset spam, but it's not bad to have both options as well. So it's nice. It's shaper. It's a toolbox. Of course, we also have three SMCs, which is incredibly flexible, not only to pull our world tree, but also just to pull whatever we need, if we need it, when we need it, or you just install this clicklessly with our Asana and world tree it off to the program, which is turns out to be a quite bit cheaper if you haven't used your world tree that turn. I think that's every card in the deck, it's 60 cards. This is a lot of fun, and I'm surprised how consistent it is and how flexible it is. I'm going to take a second now to talk about some cards that could be in the deck, should be in the deck, and specifically also weren't in the deck for many other reasons from testing that were a bit surprising. Then we also have some alternate versions of this deck that I think you could play that might be a bit more your style or tuned to your specific meta because the whole shell around this is very sound. And it's just more about how do you spend the influence slots because we're spending some big flashy influences to play a virus world tree Arasana, but you can build other versions and we have some inspiration for you. So firstly, the one influence slot on Amakua, I think that's the one that's probably the most questionable. Uh, and I think there's some other really good things you could play. Hush, very powerful card in that sort of control shaper. It's a Trojan. You can move it around. It's very, very good in Arasana. And I think there's a lot of metas where you'd rather play this than Amakua uh, very easily. Very good into Wayland, very good into NBN. Other matchups are also still fine, but you can play this. It's quite good. And the ability to get it at instant speed from your deck with World Tree is quite fine. Next up, DJ Fenris. I think I'd actually really want to consider playing this maybe sooner than Hush. This card, installing it for free in the mid to late game, again, you don't want this early, is phenomenal and generally will become Steve Cambridge. And then that gives us a lot of mid to late game value. You'll see specifically in the first game we play is that we did not have Artist, we did not get our Cubon back, we didn't have Cyberdelia, and we actually ended up running out of money at some point because we ground through our deck so aggressively. And having this mid to late game value option, that means we can run HQ and get some of our high value resources or just some nice on tempo events would be really quite valuable. And probably that late game push this deck could actually really, really value. Otherwise, I think those are the best one influence slots, but Amakua could be correct for your meta depending on what you're playing into. Other cards that are notable that we did not play the first time that I played this deck, we actually had three copies of test run. And that was the way that we would get some redundancy to get our singleton copy of world tree from my very quick testing. It turns out having test run and rejig and spending six slots on that was a fair bit worse than just running three world trees and saying, I'm just going to draw into them and have a smaller deck. Abstractly, test run into rejig is a three credit world tree, which is quite nice. But if you're missing the rejig, test running for the world tree, then letting it go back on top of your deck and then having to draw and pay another six credits is just not very tenable. And you're actually much better off just playing more copies of world tree and then just having SMC and drawing into it naturally. None of this stuff really worked out. And in all the matchups where I had it, I never played it. It was too expensive or too slow. You'd rather just have a thinner deck and have more card draw. Now, similarly to this card, something you could try, but I'm not sure is going to make sense is compile. 
It's a flexible card on its own, but abstractly, if you have a slap vandal and you compile into an ice and the ice is rezzed and you break through that ice, you can actually use the compile to produce a world tree and then use that world tree to sell the slap vandal to get a second world tree from your deck. Now, this is for MU used up very quickly as much as you can actually install the second world tree on top of the first world tree, so it's fine. You end up paying, I believe, it's seven credits to get a world tree from your deck, which is not bad. But if you're finding out that you're not getting your world tree consistently enough, you could do compile into, um, generally, you need a slap handle. You need a way to get through ice. This is maybe worth looking at, but I'd, I'd assume it's probably not necessary. Next up, environmental testing. This is an Arasana card. I had this in my earlier versions of the deck. It's nice to get this down credulously, but as you see in the three-step plan, at no point is the first two steps involve installing a bunch of programs or hardware. Generally, you get all your value off of resources, and then eventually you go install your programs and hardware. Maybe there's a reason you can play one copy of this and you use it as a terminating line to one of your World Tree resource chains, and then by that time, you'll have enough, like, you know, are things to bounce back and forth with Vernissage, install the same Trojan, all that nonsense. But it turned out to be too slow. Putting three credits into this, we had other things to install that weren't programmed or hardware. It did not work out. Other things that didn't work out, and I was actually surprised, is Mayfly. Mayfly was very, very common back in the Cabanessa Wu days of World Tree decks. And while Cabanessa Wu could grab this from her deck, which was very quite valuable, you had this universal, albeit expensive breaker. And before it trashed itself, you would just World Tree it into something else. Again, there's a very different priority here where world treating early programs into other programs is not the priority for the deck. Uh, we just didn't really need this. And that's kind of the beauty with our Asana is that we have Slap Vandals that does what this does, but cheaper and not as flexible, but a lot cheaper. Uh, so we largely didn't need this 2MU sync that can be pretty awkward in the mid game. Unfortunately, a cool card that worked very well with the Mayfly engine was uh, Flame Out, which is one of these expendable hardware that the deck actually could really like. When this thing comes down, it has nine credits of value. And if you install your Mayfly on it, you don't care if it's going to flame out because you're going to sell it to the World Tree. And this was also another good card that later on you sold this hardware to get another hardware from your deck. And the hardware tutoring chains in this deck are not as strong. They're sometimes it'll happen, but not very consistently. So it's a bummer we can't play a card like this because it doesn't really make sense with Trojans at all. So it was a really good thing in those decks, but it doesn't make a lot of sense. Similarly, when I originally put this deck together, I thought we would use Flame Out and then use Arasana to install things like Euler and things like Gauss, which are programs that are really good on the turn they installed. And then we would sell these to the World Tree so we didn't have to worry about Arasana's text destroying them. I would say at the end of the day, the Trojans were good enough and we didn't really need to pursue this, which is a bummer. Speaking of Trojans, Ika. Could be a Trojan you want to consider playing. This card, I don't think we'd actually use it that often to break sentries. That's nice in a pinch. But it's nice to have a Trojan that we don't have to host on the Corporation's Ice. There's a couple games in which we install a Trojan, hoping that we'd get it back to start a Vernissage engine and the corporation just trashes the ice and we lose the Trojan. And it generally does slow us down a fair bit. So having that safety Trojan that we just hosted on our side of the table could be worth something, albeit uh, it's not something you would excitedly go get with your World Tree. Now, speaking of things you get with your World Tree, here's another couple options that I think you can consider. Cordyceps. I honestly kind of want to try this. This I deem to be too greedy in testing and cut it before it actually hit the uh, the table. But this is a zero cost install with World Tree and it works really well with the Knob Curry engine. And this might be a better inclusion in that sort of Plongi slot so we can move around ice and set up a bad remote server and a bad R&D or whatever works for us. We can move the best ice onto archives. You have a lot of flexibility with this card and with Knob Curry, the fun never ends. So I think this is something that I want to test, albeit there's a chance it's too greedy and too slow. It is a very powerful effect abstractly. Now, of course, there's so many other cards that are so good inclusions that we could have or didn't because of influence constraints in this deck. But just to go over some ideas here, Liberated Counts, we had this in an early build. It's a fair bit of influence if you want to play two of them, but it's a really good thing to take off 12 credits and World Tree it forward. If you need more money in the deck, there's other ways to do it, too. I think a terminating line of Proco Professional Contacts could be kind of cool. Getting this down for two credits, again, I don't think it would be the first thing we'd get down with a World Tree, but in the late game, our draw does stall out, our economy can stall out a bit, so it might be nice to solve both of those with a two-credit install from the depths of the World Tree. Another thing, too, Miss Bones is pretty common. I say with Parisha and Imp, this deck specifically is not that bad into assets, but getting 11 credits worth of value on Miss Bones and then selling her to the World Tree is pretty sick. And again, that's this deck, which is just one version of the deck. And I want to highlight some other versions of this deck, too, because I want to say that this is just a play style of an engine. And then you can put some big, splashy cards in here to build something else. I haven't tested this version at all, 
But it's so easy to take this basic engine and for instance, here, we're playing a Maw version where we went ahead and we traded away our knob Korea and our virus package for Maw, which in some ways actually might work better for us because it does give you two actual MU, which is something the deck really appreciates. We wanna be running once a turn and if you're not stealing or trashing with Maw, you can get a lot of that sort of imp-like pressure on the corporation. We have Hannah for some influence. We can get her consistently. You probably don't want to trash her, but if we're running remote servers for free, we're getting Ma for free. And in this version, Amakua might work even a bit better. But then there's so many high influence, weird cards that I think you could pursue to get some interesting world tree decks. Do you want to play Virtuoso Shaper? Why not? When you install this for one credit consistently in every game and you're running your mark and getting some cool value. Masterwork, I would actually consider playing this in Shaper. We can get away with playing one copy of it for a whopping four influence, but then play some weird hardware based world tree deck, which might just work out. District 99, this is not the biggest reason to play it, but we're trashing things consistently. Why don't you want to build a Shaper recursion engine? You can get this for free. You want a bit of archives, R&D pressure. You could get Iru consistently, play one copy, find it in every matchup. And then of course, just like basic stuff like the twinning is a nice thing to go grab for your deck if you want a bit more flexible pressure. And then you're charging this by using uh, credits off of the Vernissage. The fact that we can have one copy in 60 and find it consistently, it's kind of the beauty of World Tree. This is the list. We have a bunch of games coming up. Just to tell you, we played, I think, about eight games. The hardest matchup by a mile was NBN. That's just a difficult thing to talk about right now. In Shaper, there's literally zero cards that interact with tags. I'm hoping that'll change in the near future. But if you're running, then you're finding Behold, you're getting Oppo'd, you get a Amani Sanai up, and then they bounce your World Tree. It's a bit of a nightmare. So that is the one matchup that I think if you're playing into a lot of that, you might want to change parts of this deck around because it is kind of difficult. We played into a bunch of HP, we played into Rush Op, we played into Acid Op, we played into like Ag Infusion Glacier and all of those matchups. We had a really cool matchup with a lot of like player expression and a lot of really exciting lines. The first two turns against the last game coming up into HP Precision Design is absolute shaper nonsense and it's just totally wild. But this is Tech Tree and it feels good. World Tree feels fine. You're getting it consistently, you're pushing yourself forward and it's a real surprise for a lot of corporations that don't see the World Tree coming down and you're flying, which is a lot of fun. Hopefully enjoy the games again. I was pretty new at this deck when I was playing the game and even like, you know, the dozen of games in or so, I feel a lot better about it. We spend a lot of time thinking at the top of the turn to plan your turn and that just gets faster and faster the more you play it. So the sky's the limit and I'm excited to grind more of this. Again, if you've been enjoying this, you wanna leave a like on the video, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. Enjoy the games. All right, we're playing against Op. Uh, we're playing some World Tree Arisana. Op can be a bit tricky. Op we can do some cool things with a slap handle. Deck list of the week right now at the time of recording is an Op deck. I'm just want to make sure we know what we're doing. Okay, it's just a regular Op deck with gank. Uh, this hand's not it. Again, we want to get our World Tree down very quickly. Uh, we're gonna mulligan for that. Uh, that is relatively okay. A bit, albeit a bit small, uh, slow. We have World Tree, but like probably our first couple turns is face check, credit, cast, cast. And we wait till one of the daily casts is at two before we put the world tree down. Uh, so we're gonna probably have to get the Earthrise down as well, but ideally we top deck into like some actual uh, operation economy or event economy because two casts might be a bit slow. Let's see what they do. There's no reason not to face check on turn one into whatever they ice up because they wanna protect it. Generally, they're gonna be paying like uh, three credits at worst case for border control or uh, Hordum for the Stavka, you can't really res it. And there's always a thread there of Arisana blanking some of your stuff. Like uh, in theory, we don't actually have a way to blank ice in this deck. We put our influence on Amakua, which is not great in this matchup, uh, but they went for a slow start. So we're gonna capitalize on that as well. We can face check into HQ here. I don't think they're gonna res much. Afshar is less popular than it's been in a long time. Did they mulligan? They mulligan. So, so this might just be the deck of the week if they're new to it, which means like we can fa face check relatively well. Oh, this deck actually has archers and stuff because that's pretty annoying. But it means we can face check into HQ, then we do credit cast cast, just force them to res some of their stuff. Sometimes it's not great when they res like an ice wall and then they have an extract target. So sometimes your aggression is not great into op. Uh, but here, I don't think there's much we're gonna be punished up if this is the deck list of the week. I think worst case would be uh, an Afshar, which actually would be pretty bad for us. Cause then we can't do the double day casts. We'd be down to three credits. So see if they res here. No further action. So we get a, get a bit of a read on the deck. Mavirus, it's good to trash that. It's an important card in the matchup because it comes a two coster, let alone we do have some viruses. So we'll just do credit cast casts. And then in a couple turns, we'll get a world tree down. Um, I think we can get the earth race down sooner, but ideally, again, the world tree trades it to cast away when it's on two credits into either a class act for card draw, which will be what, or an earth race hotel, probably a class act. And we'll go from there. Oh, is this like an asset deck? If that's the case, we want world tree down to get our Parisha. So we can run one of these for sure. We'll draw. 
Okay, slap battle is nice. So we want to trash the Sphiga Taurus, but this looks like it could be assets. Uh, so like the Blood in the Water type decks. It's a re Coco. We don't have to deal with that. If it's a Sphiga Tour here, we'll trash it. But we just need to keep on top of our economy. Second Rikoko. So the only way that this becomes anything is if they score out an Azia from hand. Uh, if this is Tuno's list, which was the decks of the week a while ago, uh, that deck only had like one Azia. So not too worried. If we do Earthrise, we go down to uh, four credits next turn. Uh, we get some card draw going, which is quite nice. We've drawn to an economy event. I think it's worth it. Uh, otherwise, we're going to have to world tree the following turn. So I think we can afford to do this. We just want to keep our money up. So paying four for uh, what's going to be four card draw and then another resource. Oh, what's actually really annoying is that these are in phase. So World Tree's not going to miss one of them. We probably actually should have held off for a turn because this goes in three turns and these goes in three turns. So we're going to actually run out of World Tree value. It's a weird thing. Uh, Earthrise order doesn't matter. So we have another daily cast. So next turn, we want to get down our, uh, uh, our World Tree. Uh, now, if we face check into something like an Anvil, it can be pretty ugly for us. They can make the one costers into zero costers. However, they have to res it when they res the ice. A lot of people forget that. Uh, so I think here we can actually do nothing. If we do credit, credit, credit casts, they're not doing a lot. We just need to keep our money up. We have a slap handle to charge their remote server. Uh, that will take us down to four. Next turn, we'll be on a lot of money and then we'll get World Tree down and we can just bump into something. They're going to go slow. We're going to go slow. We're an engine deck. Once we're up, we're going to be uh, doing our thing. But uh, so far, not the fastest start. Probably need to check that. One of these. And we want to run anyways. So Earthrise first. That's good. Uh, we have urban art as well, which is really nice. But this turn, we definitely want to get down our world tree. So we do world tree. We go down to four dirty laundry. We can check server two for safety. If it's server four and it's a spin doctor and it's cracked, uh, it's a real nightmare for us. And we'll trade the daily cast into a telework or something like this. Uh, we then want to like do slap band. We'll check server three, which is not amazing. Let's go. The fact that these are mostly in phase is definitely an issue. <laughs> A lot of people miss that we're playing a 57 card deck. You should always check your opponent's deck size. But now we can trade uh, Daily Cast into here. We don't really need the more card draw. I think we just want to have some upfront economy. All three Daily Casts are counted for. So the only econ we have is Telework, which is fine. That's the Rococo. So now we want to contest this. We want to do it on this click. Uh, if a Slap Vandal hits a border control, so be it. If this now trashes programs, so uh, at least if it's if they res here... There's some risk here for sure. If it's like a Stavka, we'll lose the world tree, which is pretty bad. Uh, we'll try it. We'll try it. If we lose the world tree immediately, we're going to feel pretty bad. It's more likely this to be an end the run because you generally don't push out behind the Stavka. Uh, if it's a Forma carry eventually showing up, that's not great. Uh, no, all you. So let's see if it is a Stavka. Stavka, envelopment. Okay. So here, if we had uh, what's it called in our hand or hush, we could beat this. Unfortunately, we're not going to beach this. That means that this is like more likely to be a Rashida. I think we'll just let that fire. Oh, actually, sorry. Sorry. Uh, I think we will actually uh, slap bendle on that and then install urban for a last click and then hope this isn't a, a Sviga tour. I'm just going to do this mid run. I'll do this mid run before ETR. So we're going to do this while we're hitting the envelopment, which we can do. So we're just going to get this on an ice. Eventually, they will destroy this. So I don't want to do it. Uh, and then we can put that urban art just to return this to hand. But yeah, once they res on encounter. So it is Rashida. That makes sense. Uh, so what server four is, is a bit of a question mark here. We have two cards in hand, so we won't die if they Azf us. Um, that's really important to keep in mind. But uh, we're, uh, yeah, we should have spaced these out a bit more. We're going to lose a bit of value here. We don't have a great way to beat Envelopment. We're just going to have to cleaver through it with Turbine. So luckily getting that res sooner than later. Uh, again, we went on Amaku instead of a Hush in this deck, and I think you could play either. Amaku makes a lot of sense, and this matchup is not great because they're generally running multiple viruses. Uh, but it is a good reason to run once per turn with World Tree. So. Now, this card we install once per turn with the DZ. It is just a click for two credits and it helps us install things, which is really important. Um, and that's quite nice. So next turn, we want to get the DZ down. Uh, we want to run. Uh, we'll trade away. Depends what we draw. If we draw a nice resource. Oh, it looks like they have an ZF in hand. Oh, they're just extracting it. That makes sense. So five credits, they get a zero coster. So we'll see a spin doctor here. Sometimes an Angelique, sometimes a Rashida. They have to get a zero. So there's a couple options. Go for a ganked spin doctor. Cool. So that allows them to fix their hand. We want to pressure this sooner. Uh, they have a lot of cards in hand, so they're going to definitely discard some. So we want to pressure this. Getting through envelopment is a bit tricky. They could overinstall the slap bundle, which we actually would be pretty upset about. Um, maybe it was right to do an envelopment. I don't think they would have extra extracted this while it still has three counters, but getting your border control down is almost always right. It's really good. So when you check what this is, if it's an OZF, we haven't figured out if they're on like grinder or whether they're on. Um, Fast events. This kind of looks more. Damn it. 
that's the worst case scenario for us. Maybe we should have put them in Velmen. I think they might have extracted this though. But they're going to install an ice here, yeah. That sucks. Don't worry, we have more of those. We have uh, a couple more Trojans, but our plan there to get World Tree and every turn Urban Urban Massage is a lot of value. So how do we beat this? Cleaver is not going to do it. I think here we probably like, I think we'd get a class act down. This is in the IZF, we want to deal with it. Okay, so they discarded. Uh, we'll do Earthrise first, doesn't really matter. So we have Turbine, so unfortunately, also Simulchip doesn't get the Slap end unless we trade something away. Uh, so here, if we Diesel, we'll be on seven cards. I think that's fine. We want to hit Telework this turn. We want to generally find a Trojan before we're running. Oh, okay. So Nobakuri Imp is a really good angle. We really need a Trojan to trade into an Imp here. But you want to run Archives. Challenging this doesn't really make sense right now. So what do we want to do? Uh, the fact that we drew, drew the knob Kree means that we can't, like, thinking, we need to figure out how we world tree this turn. I think there's an argument that we could get rid of the telework on six counters to get an earth, uh, to get another earth rise. I think card draw is more important here than the money, because we have good money. Uh, we could trade the turbine into, or the tur, yeah, and the buzzsaw into a Trojan. That's pretty rough. Diza doesn't get much anymore, because this is the one big hardware we want to pull from our deck. We could also go for Amakua, but the deck is running multiple viruses, so that's also a bit difficult. Uh, getting Parisha is also kind of reasonable. I don't think we know what Server 4 is, do we? No, we don't. But if this is Rococo, that's an SZF, that's a problem. Uh, getting them to Simon Chip is important because if ZF, ZF hits us for damage, that's not good. I think we draw once for Trojan? Yeah, that didn't make a lot of sense to it. <laughs> once I said it out loud, I'm like, wait a second. So I think here we'll just get the Simon Chip down. Uh, this doesn't threaten Clot because we don't actually have a Clot threat. And then here we can get a Sure Gamble up. Firing, not firing the World Tree right now feels pretty cursed. We can either discard a card. I think we're just gonna play the Sure Gamble from hand. Uh, the DZ from hand is also totally fine. Uh, MU is really important. If we lose the Knob Kree to Nazia, if we like can't get the Knob Kree back, which is a bit of a bummer, maybe that's correct. Because next turn, <laughs> uh, next turn we'll be on two more credits. Yeah, we'll just get this down so we don't lose it. But this is now a really important once per turn run trigger. So we just need to get an Imp or an Amakua to charge this thing up. And then ideally you start threatening things. Second Rashida is really good. Didn't contest the Spin Doctor yet. Envelopment down to three subroutines. Still all three, pretty relevant. Yeah, losing the Trojan there was really bad. Because that's two credits a turn. A good reason to run. To bust through this with Cleaver, again, we have to boost boost. So we'd have to do like Turbine Cleaver. And then we break it for three. As much as like the upfront install costs are kind of worrisome. I think we do want to challenge this. Uh, at some point, too, they'll have like fast advance pieces in hand, whether it's slash and burn. So like testing the spin doctor before an audacity goes off is also really important. If that's the case, I think we'll still run the spin doctor as much as it will deny not create world tree. Just wish we had card draw here, which we don't. But the daily cast will become a class act. So we'll probably do like Telework, gamble, run server five, run server six, trade daily cast into class act. OK. So we need to get our money up there. Solved. Um, we can run with Arisana and install this like buzzsaw for four and then just like world tree it into something else. Uh, here, what we want is mostly Namakua, but it's hard into this matchup. So I think we want to run Spin Doctor first, then run this, and then last click, we'll probably play a sure gamble. They should crack the Spin Doctor. This will deny Knob Kree and world tree. Okay. So face down's going back, makes sense. I think worst case is uh, a ZF server one or server three into uh, an advancement on this. This also could be this sort of like, I'm going to get seamless launch onto Rikoko decks and then do traps. So my virus went back. So archives is technically like runnable. I think we'll charge server six. We're looking for a Sviga tour here. We also still want to get our world tree. Uh, Daily cast will become class act to Rashida. We'll trash that. So server three is definitely an agenda. And I think we'll just let that go. So we'll play sure gamble here. We're going to draw five cards, bottom one. Uh, we probably should bottom the world tree as much as like these are cards we could lose. But now we have Imp, Knob, Kree, Engine, and we're in an okay spot. So next turn, it's Telework into an Earthrise, and we'll go from there. Oh, it's Urban. Okay, cool. So they are going to try and kill us. So Urban into Rikoko ZF is a problem. Uh, but if this is like the Blood in the Water deck, this is a really slow start for them. And if we have Knob, Kree, Imp, we can keep down one resource a turn. The Urban's also going to line up poorly with Envelopment. So if the Envelopment goes, they get a four coster and we can respond to that four coster. Um, but we're not too far away from doing like Turbine. And then ideally, we just want a Trojan because then the Trojan from Arasana becomes a Cleaver at instant speed for free. 
Maybe we'll trade the imp actually. Like we could use the imp and then si and then uh, world tree the imp later. Yeah, that might actually be right. I think we probably DZ. Okay, second ice is a problem. We also need to deal with uh, what's it called? The little form of carries at some point. Okay, big turn here. So we have a couple turns to deal with urban renewal. Mind you, class act is a good way of dealing with it. But ideally here, I think we just do, we want to install a couple cards here. So if we run server seven, we can use Arasana to install Imp, and then we're, we're kind of like, want to sandwich him the Imp back, so that's pretty bad. I don't think we have time to DZ this turn. Uh, we can Dirty Laundry, so we can do Imp, Dirty Laundry, Server 8, after running Server 7. And then we just have to make sure that we're able to run this uh, in next turn. But we'll start here. I don't know if we, we know what Server 1 is. Okay, that's gone. That's fine. Then we'll do Imp, Dirty Laundry, Server 8. Uh, we actually could have traded the Telework for something here. I think we'd rather just have card draw than we would have a click for three credit button. Yeah, because we have sure gamble, telework, creative in hand. This is fine. So here we will knob create the imp. We haven't used our sauna. We'll get rid of telework. We definitely want card draw to find uh, what's it called? Uh, a Trojan. So it's a Sphi. So we're going to imp that. That's really important. We have one more click here. Uh, we could have done DZ. We could do create a commission last click and then set up to run this next turn. I think that's fine. Uh, the envelopment will be useless. If it becomes a border control, we can just have to run back once, which shouldn't be the end of the world. But ideally, we get a slap band. Okay, I'll creative. And the next turn, we look at three. Okay, we're going to keep up, I think. If we don't know what this is. We know this is a Rikoko. This will be a four damage card, uh, which we can't really like flicker the class act in any way. So class act is a nice way to beat urban combo. But if this is border control envelopment, like envelopment doesn't do anything, they might extract it here. Install, then draw. Ideally, you do that in the other order. They can. Depends what they're looking for here, but we need to get into server one ideally extract from development. This is good if they get a border control here. We know what we're dealing with. We just want to run this multiple times. It's a border control. That's totally fine. So ideally Arasana gets a Trojan here so that we can trade the Trojan into a cleaver and then run this. If we always have to install a buzzsaw from hand to deal with that, we can. If it's a form of carry, we'll just take the damage, I think. Uh, coupon's not the Trojan we want. Uh, Nuka is not the worst. Coupon's fine. I think we don't want Nuka here. So what we can do here is we can run server nine. We can put the Cubon on this. We can trade the Cubon into a cleaver, charge server three. Uh, I think that's fine. I think that's totally fine. So here we'll use Arasana. So this is where the engine comes together. We'll Cubon on this, I guess. We'll breach the server. We'll imp what it is. We'll, we'll trade the Cubon into a refractor. We're running out of MU. Opcurry on the imp. We should maybe check server four. World tree. Uh, Cubon becomes the cleaver. It's a wall to wall. We'll imp it. Then we have three clicks to run this. Um, if this is a code gate, we can buzzsaw and then sandwich up the buzzsaw. We have the MU for that. If it's uh, form of carries, we'll just take the damage. In theory, putting that on a simul chip, like we want to preserve the simul chip. Won't be the end of the world though. We'll break that. We lost our Trojan. We could also reinstall the Trojan at the end of the turn with Simul Chip to set up the Urban Art Vernissage engine, which would be nice. So let's see what this is. Stavka's are really annoying here. Seven strength. Uh, we have no good way of dealing with that. We haven't found uh, SMCs. We can slap Vandal six strength, but not seven strength. It's a Stavka that we get in and they crack the border control. We just run back. They clear our board, but like, uh, then we install a Simul Chip and repair our board. It's not the end of the world. It's not great, but it's not the end of the world. We can always just threaten also to run HQ because if we're worried about Urban into um, Azef, like if we pressure one of the combo pieces down by like flickering the imp, we can trash or steal slash and burns, Azef's audacities. We have to make sure we're able to run this back. Second boarding control. Okay, so we can actually run this back. If it's a three cost dice, we can slap Vandal through it. But this is just, uh, we break this for two every time. So if they crack a boarding control here, we can run back. If they crack a boarding control there, we can run back. And they don't really have a server. So getting here like a Magna or Enigma might be annoying, like a three cost code gate. Because if it's a, uh, what's it called? A sandstone, we can always deal with it. Okay. So if it's a sandstone, we could simul chip for, uh, what's it called, which is pretty good for a slap handle. And then we have the urban art on. I like that actually a fair bit. So here to save some money, we'll slap handle on top of this. We'll break it. This is the matchup where you really want the, uh, the hush. So if they crack this boarding control, they lose value. And then they don't really have a scoring remote. 
A deck is on mostly five threes. We want to be a bit careful with simul chips because the deck does have like half of SDSs if this is what we think it is. The crack the border control here, like we run back one. Yeah, so that goes down. So we don't know what this is. Last click, I think we'll just hit the sure gamble. Uh, the sandstone might get extracted. That'd be bad. We've been really wanting the urban art furnace. Maybe there's actually a reason we should get the simul chip down as a way to respond if they destroy this ice. Uh, because the urban art furnace, we don't need the credits, but it's two credits a turn. We're going to be running anyways. So now we have a bunch of our engines up, right? One more spin doctor. Uh, they're far away from threat. So we don't have to worry about Angelique. It could be an Angelique and server three. So we'll just get the simul chip down and run. Our MU is goofed up. So the DZs are going to matter. Mind you, Knob Cree gives you only virus MU. So currently it's only the imp. But if they're on five threes, we're not that worried about scoring out. Yeah, they're going to take that turn back. They got no new information. That's totally fine, of course. Okay, so our multi axis is conduit R&D. Again, there's a lot of my viruses around, so it's not the greatest. Knob Curry Imp deals with my virus relatively well. And I think that's the only... Uh, it's, we have a couple other viruses. We have Amaku, of course. We have Palongi. Yeah, I think the sandstone's going to go here. What ice we're worried about? Stopka's like pretty bad. We haven't seen a Formicary yet. And next turn we can trade our Earth Rise in, into like a Nuka or probably another Earth Rise, right? So maybe Darwin, they just changed the order of the cards in the servers. Earthrise Class Act, love it. Urban Art will return that as much as we might reinstall it. So Parisha, we probably just want to have on hand. Uh, a second Slap Vandal is actually kind of valuable because we can sell one of them to go get the next piece of our puzzle. Uh, Parisha actually maybe doesn't matter, but that's the cheapest thing that we can sell with our Asana to go get the next puzzle piece, which would probably be an Echelon. Um, I don't think we want the Nuka. Okay. So we have a target. We're going to sell our Earthrise for a second Earthrise. Comes in for free with Urban. We can check server 10. We can check server 3. Uh, we can install a slap bundle for free on this. I think that's fine. We want to get the simul chip down before we lose it to like Angelic damage. Uh, Knob Kree on the imp. World tree, trashy earth rise. We'll just get another earth rise. It's a wall to wall. Yeah, the most expensive card they have to trash would be four. I'm okay imping this. Okay, so then we can run server three. The border control becomes a code gate. That's fine. We install the slap bundle from hand. Urban art furnace is doing its thing. Uh, I'll install the simul chip so we don't lose some weird damage. Run server three. We can always run it back if we need to. Uh, this now only costs three to break with Cleaver. We'll still slap Vendel because we want to install one virus a turn. Uh, we could have got the DZ down. Uh, there was a bit too much to do this turn. But we need to get the DZ down because we're going to be installing this every turn. So if they crack this here, I think we're relatively okay with it. If they install a code gate, we have another slap Vendel from hand. We don't really have the ability to install it though. We can always simul chip this one back. And because this will be three strength. So this is fine. So we definitely want to challenge this. This seems important to them. Above the law would be nice. Let's see what they get here. So it's another sandstone. So we can run and we can simul chip this slap vandal onto this sandstone and then break this for one. It's weak to Mavirus. Uh, I think that's fine. I think we just run this back and simul chip this slap vandal. This seems important to them. I don't know what it is. We've seen three Rashida though. I think this might be an agenda. So we'll simul chip, trash this, slap Vandal on that. We break this for one each. Oops. They could definitely would like a free purge. Uh, eventually, once we get our, our uh, turbine down, we're not that worried about this server. So this one now goes down for one because the strength goes down every time we hit it. This is an agenda. It's SDS. Okay, cool. So SDS, what do we want to trash? It's actually quite interesting. We're two simul chips down. If we don't trash it, I don't think they're actually going to do anything with it. Uh, if we lose this slap vandal, I think that's totally fine. We have another in hand. It removes our urban art vernissage, but this turns on Daniela, which we have to watch out for. Uh, Parisha, we can install from hand clicklessly and then make that into Starbo Enjoyer. <laughs> Flesh and blood stuff. Uh, I think it's the Parisha, probably. Yeah, we'd like to get that. I think that's the next way to steal SDS, but we're now technically on threat three. So let's see how they capitalize on that. This remote server, again, we break for four credits. Uh, we just need to work on a telework. Ideally, we draw into like a dirty laundry or something. We don't still know what server four is, but that imp is doing work. So big thing here is like they pop two border controls. That's like the one unfair card they have to build a remote server. And the other thing is making sure we keep our hand size up because if they have uh, the face up 5-3 agenda that when you advance, we have to take meat damage. Cityworks project. Um, we just want to make sure we're not caught with low hand size, which is great. We get like two cards every turn for free. So now they could pay two to do two meat damage with us. Uh, well, they always could. We also maybe want to pressure this so they can't use like Angelique as a fast events tool. 
Creative Nuka SMC. SMC is okay. I don't think we really want it. So this turn, we don't have that much to do. We want to use Telework, hit Telework. We don't actually have a really good World Tree target this exact turn. So in short, I think we do install DZ, run server 11, we put a slap vandal on HQ while running, we imp whatever this is, uh, then we probably install telework, play creative. So that gets to do everything, right? So here we are, Asana. We will slap vandal onto HQ. We'll breach. We don't want to do with these because they'll extract these. Uh, world tree. I think we're going to ignore world tree here. It's optional. Uh, place a virus counter on imp. Three Coco. We might as well imp that. We're there. And then here we can ins hit tel install telework, hit telework. The other option is install telework, hit creative. I'd rather keep cards up in hand. Uh, this is not that fast. Next turn we'll get rid of the earth rise. The following turn we'll get rid of the telework with the world tree. But we just want to get our MU slightly up here. Um, we have to actually draw into Dizas. I think MU is like a tight part of this deck, unfortunately. Eventually, you don't actually need the World Tree. Like, you, like we have 26 cards left in our deck. This is turn 11, though. Like, this is relatively, I think, slow for the op deck. But at some point, we just have like a full Breaker Suite classically, and the World Tree just doesn't have a function. At some point, it shows itself out once you've done enough damage. Because, like, we're still a very good value deck with Class Act and uh, Nop Curry Imp. We're doing what we're doing. It's working. So we need to contest this remote server, right? Like we just install turbine run. If they install another piece of ice, that's where MU maybe gets tight. Earthrise will show itself out. In terms of like the extracts, we've seen two of them. So with only one spin doctor left, right? Two boarding controls, two extract outs are a lot of the power cards. As Figator needs to be dealt with, Urban Renewal. I don't know what server four is. I wonder if it is an energy. It's not a Rashida. We've seen one Rococo here, one Rococo trashed. So we they might put another ice here. Again, we're not very good at dealing with envelopment. I think that's the hardest ice, and there has to be some respect. Oh, slash and burn above the law. Oh, nice. We lost the telework. That's actually the card I think we're the least concerned about. Luckily, we hit that. Uh, but that is slash and burn in the bin. So unless this is a spin doctor, that's a free slash and burn, which is nice. So we'll take clicks. We'll do Earthrise first. Uh, Plongi, Amakua, DZ. We definitely love the DZ. The Plongi is actually kind of nice. Uh, it doesn't take up real MU, and it works really well with Cleaver and Buzzsaw. Amaku is a bit harder to use, as much as it's also anti-synergistic with Imp. In this deck, they have a lot of Mavirus. So we'll put that back to hand. Okay, so we can run Archives. We can trade the Earthrise into, I think, another Earthrise, which is quite okay. No, that's the last one. So we'll just get whatever <laughs> resource we want, another probably Telework or something. Uh, do we want to install the Slap Vandal? I think we do. It's free. And this might put us on game point, unless there's a Spin Doctrine server 4. So they're actually on a lot of smaller agendas. This is not the Blood in the Water deck. So running HQ at some point is going to win us the game. So that was the last Spin Doctor. So Slash and Burn goes back. Let's see what else they put back. There's a couple power cards here we're worried about. Extract, Board Control, Envelopment are all probably the most worrisome. Um, one Urban out, but we're good with the remote server. I think Extract is probably the best thing, but the density in R&D gets worse the more and more they like use their op ability. They haven't fired it too often, though. Oh, in theory, we should have Arisana on this run. Uh, we can still respond to this. So we will slap Mendel from hand, we'll put it here. So they did uh, slash and burn and envelopment. So world tree, we'll get rid of Earthrise. We'll go get a uh, telework, I guess. Virus counter on imp. Okay, so they threw out an ice wall, makes sense. So here we have three clicks left. Hitting telework is fine. Just setting up for the late game is like the next couple turns is totally fine. We need to be a bit more aggressive because they're on slash and burn and probably audacity. So we want to run HQ sooner or later. I'm a bit worried about Stavka. If that's the case, Turbine's pretty good. As much as Stavka half run, we can't really beat. Well, we could with Slap Vandal and then another thing. Uh, we have no access to SMCs though. So like our echelons are just somewhere in the deck. So ideally we'll like Polongi into it as some sort of trade. So we've already installed uh, hardware. So we don't really have to do that. I think we're just gonna do Telework, install another DZ um, for free. We've already used the trigger this turn. So we don't wanna drop the Turbine. And I think if we creative, we go down to a few cards in hand. I think that's fine. In theory, cling for credits, like not that worse, much worse. I don't think they're on CityWorks project. I think they're on real agendas. I'd love to be, <laughs> be able to thread and clot, but we don't have in the deck, not that they know it. So I think we'll creative. And Ozzy here actually could be a problem because we only have one more simul chip. So there's a chance we're being a bit too greedy and we should actually install one of these breakers. We have two MU, so we can install the buzzsaw. Uh, Polongi though, will get us somewhere. All right, they're pushing. So here, we can always install Polongi from hand, which is fine. We need to run this. We know where two border controls are, so we're probably only gonna have to run this twice at worst. Upgrade. 
can be frightening. We don't have any free card draw coming in. We'll return the slap to hand. So we have four credits worth of installables here. So we can drop the turbine for entirely free. If it is a Stavka, we have to install a Plongi from hand and break with a cleaver. Not the end of the world. So I think we do telework, install turbine for free. And then we can run server three. If that's like a mana garm, we probably have the money to beat it. If it's mana garm formicary, it's a bit annoying. We could potentially die. I think if they score an agenda here, it's like not the worst thing. I think we just want to force a res here because we break these for one credit each. The outermost being a Stavka is the worst case scenario. Then we'll like Arasana in the Plongi and then Cleaver it because I don't think they would Stavka half run here. So we'll try. If it's a boarding troll, I think we're actually really happy because we can run it back and it only costs us like three credits plus two more. Uh, no, all you. Now we want to make sure if we haven't used Arasana, we'll install the Slap Vendel at some point. Maybe we'll keep cards in hand, actually. That's fine. I don't think we need more greed value when we double these at Urban. So see the res here. If it's a Stavka, they could also get a three cost, a two cost ice. I'm not sure what we're worried about. The fact that we don't have a Sentry Breaker yet is a bit weird, but we can always like, we could have dealt with that by like trashing a Polongi into a Sentry Breaker on, mind you, we haven't World Treat yet. I'm not sure what the upgrade is. It's probably a Mavirus. If it's an Anji, we're a bit upset about it. If we lose the Buzzsaw, we shouldn't hit continued movement in theory. They're just thinking because we can still respond by slap bandling and we have some options. I don't think it actually matters. Yeah, op is really tricky. I think this is a Stavka if they're considering it. Longi from hand is like a really weird line to play around. It is a Stavka. So let's see if they trash or not. So they're going to trash an unrest to make it seven. So neat. So, okay. So we can respond to that if they don't. Now we don't do anything. So if they don't do anything, we go to encounter. And during encounter, we can install the Plongi and break this for a bit. Because in theory, we're still in approach and I can respond to this and then they can respond to me. But if I didn't, uh, we go to encounter. Why that matters is because they can't res virus and deal with Plongi. So here we'll use Arasana. We'll install Plongi from hand. We'll use Plongi to make this a barrier. And then we'll just break it for five. Not bad. And now that Stavka is down, unless they res a three coster later and surprises with a half run. Uh, this Plongi, we're going to probably Arasana. Do I have action after the Plongi before you? You don't. Unless I installed it on approach. So I think there's a Mavirus in here. That would make sense. If I messed up and installed this on approach, they could respond to it and res the Mavirus and purge the virus. Not only can they not res during the encounter window, during the encounter, the active player gets to do all paid ability windows in a row uh, without, uh, you know, any sort of intervention. So that's pretty sick. Now here in theory, we might need to draw one if it's Daniela. I think it is Mavirus. Now the Mavirus can become um, Mana Garm. We have enough money to deal with that and still imp it. But I think it's an agenda to the virus. We are definitely going to need to deal with the Stavka soon. So I think we're just going to make the Plongi an echelon. Reach server. Let's see if they have any tricks here. Keeping the Plongi around for Nob Curry is like kind of cute. We're only going to need so many imp tokens. Let's see if they purge out. They haven't used their op ability. So we'll do uh, Nob Curry on a bit greedy. And then we'll World Tree. We'll trash the Plongi to get an echelon. Access cards, it's a virus. Cool. They could have rezzed it for a damage. We'll trash that for sure. Uh, we accessed the bad order. So this urban renewal, we're going to have to pay three for instead of getting for free. Here, I think we're just going to draw to keep cards up in hand. Um, they definitely have a lot of agendas in HQ. We're like very close to the full suite that we can get rid of the world tree. We have access to all our breakers. Uh, we just don't have infinite economy. So I think getting the telework into what would it become that would be economy? We've used all casts. That's our last telework. I think I'm just going to draw, but next turn we probably hit the telework for three. Uh, Conduit's probably the more playable card here. That's how we're going to try and win. But I think there's definitely agendas in HQ, right? There's 16 cards left in V. We've seen five points. Like they're totally flooded. Uh, we have to respect Stavka, though. Stavka half run because they have three costers rezzed. Then resetting these sandstones don't really matter. We break them for two. I think the deck probably should have one copy at least of Cyberdelia, which is a card that DZ should become, ideally. Uh, this server, I don't think we can afford to run. It cost us four. That is a bit of money. <laughs> So we'll draw for an uh, operation. Oh, overclock makes that a bit more doable. So we can overclock the server, run it for free. Um, if it's the um, a virus, they can go get a half run and that would be a problem. A lot of people don't realize that, but you can on a pre-res stuff, get a half run. And then we would have to like slap end one of the subroutines. Uh, it's not stellar. I think here, the only thing we can break is code gates. I'm not too worried about code gates. Are we at the point that we get rid of the urban art renaissance? We have a slap bundle though, and it comes in for free. It's two credits a turn as long as we're installing cards. So I think we run HQ here. I think it's likely that they're flooded. We'll get some imp damage. If they res ice here, they probably can't score out. Uh, I think that could be the last. Nope, all receivers are counted for. 
I think we're going to telework here. I don't know what other resources we have in our deck. All daily cast. It would be mostly Nuka. That's all teleworks. So yeah, it's mostly Nuka. So I'm going to take the money here. We'll just run HQ. We don't need to overclock it. We have one more MU either for the slap vendel. Uh, there's no Koge that's really punishing here. A seven strength Stavka would be annoying. It's expensive. Afshar. Okay. Um, we're going to lose two. We can install and break the slap vendel for free. We're risking this to be a stop, guys. So that drops us down to six, five, four. Um, that means we can still break Stavka. They have to rest here. Yeah, the imp value is worth it. So we're going to install the slap vendel for free using the DZ. It'll go here. We're still good on MU. We'll break the one subroutine that matters. We'd love some bad publicity if they score out a hostile. That's for sure. So we'll lose two there. That puts us on four. Again, Stavka into Bavirus into half run will get us here. Uh, it's going to be a problem. At least then maybe we like transition to Amakua. They don't res here, so that's probably pretty expensive where they need to score out. So we'll do World Tree. I think the Urban. What else do we have in our deck, though? It's just card draw. We could get rid of the decent for Adiza to thin the deck. We'll be over MU for a second, so I think we're going to ignore the World Tree here. Place one virus counter on the Imp. We should see an agenda here. We'll Imp that. That's really important. That was an Atlas. That's good. Uh, we could draw. We didn't get any good economy this turn. Two overclocks. Okay. This is where I think we need some sort of infinite economy in the deck. I don't know. Oh, it's just a Maryland. Uh, whether we want like an artist or like out of ideas there. But having like some slow infinite economy card would maybe be reasonable. They're drawing up. We're going to pressure HQ every turn. This cost us three. They can now res this for six. Uh, they're throwing out cards. We should check archives. We will return this to hand. So I think we draw once for econ. Turtle is like antithetical to um, imp. I think the overclock is probably just a bit better. So here, I think we're gonna, we can get rid of the world tree. I don't think we need the world tree anymore. Uh, so we can just install the buzzsaw for free and then overclock HQ. I think that's fine. It brings echelon to five, which is okay. Yeah, I think that's fine. I think we've got enough value. So we're overclock HQ. Uh, we have MU here, so we can still do the slap bandle forever. So we'll buzzsaw this. Uh, we've already, Oh, we, we don't lose the overclock credits here, right? Yeah, I forgot about that. This actually was a bad overclock. Uh, we have the Cubon in the bin. We'd love to give the Cubon. The Peach of Sean actually might have been worth something here. Because uh, it does save some money. Let's see if they res on six here. They don't. I wonder if it's like a magnet. Oh, we should have installed with Arasana. Sorry, sorry. Uh, I missed. Sorry, one second. So we will. Oh, this actually costs a credit though, right? Because we've used our DZs. I don't think we're going to install much more. I don't think we have to do it. Uh, it's all fine. Imp that seems important. Wow, uh, economy. What do we have left? We have one creative commission, one sure gamble, one dirty laundry. I assume our deck would be a lot of operations here, events here. Yeah, I think a cyber dealy would be actually quite nice. Not that it would fire on the app chart, but just having some sort of like late game economy we can transition into. We can also just like drop the conduit and run R and D and make things a bit awkward. Uh, it's really good with. Uh, surprised we haven't found an agenda yet. There's 11 cards in R and D. There might be some in archives. But like, what? They didn't shuffle that many face downs back. The running HQ costs us three credits. Draw once. That's a yikes. I think on two credits, right? Like, it's kind of frightening. This is actually like a really ugly late game. Wait a second. Like, we just ran out of money. How do we get infinite money in Shaper? Do we just need more pressure by this point in the game? Okay, I'm uh, thinking. So the remote server cost is abstractly one, two, three, four. That's more money than we have. Now we can overclock it. If it's a virus, it's bad. I think we can just keep the server down. Uh, we're looking for one more spin doctor. Could be urban, could be Svi. I think all those are good. I don't think they push an agenda here. But if we do this, it's technically free. It leaves us on six credits. Now, if they do res a three coster here, and they put it on the Stavka if they like get some virus and they get a half run, which at this point they might have drawn the half run, which is like a real problem for them. I think we can go for it, but we can definitely get blown out here. If that's the case, we have to win off Amakua, which we will ask SMC, but we'll check this. This is like, yeah, we just need more money. So right, as long as we get through this, so fully break Stavka. So this is a one credit run for us, unless there's some surprises, which as long as we've gone through the Stavka, it's fine. It could be a ganked. Um, I think we're credit perfect to break ganked. We also should install a slap bundle here. Break that. Again, turbine. 
whatever this is, we'll imp it. We have two credits, which means if we're ganked into Stavka, we're fine. Place one virus counter on the imp. The Maryland, I guess we'll imp that. We're here. It's not the most important thing to imp. If they have slightly more money, it's not the end of the world. I don't think we're gonna run HQ this turn though, so whatever. Oh, we forgot to do Arasana. That's on me. We definitely should have Arasana there. I don't think we're gonna be installing that much. I think we just do credit credit. Again, HQ is probably really flooded. Archives is probably worth running. They might have discarded an agenda here. But we just want to camp this remote server. Uh, there are some like really risky things that they do move virus into half run, but we're just hoping at this point they've drawn into the half run and then it's like kind of useless. That being said, like we can still break one subroutine from hand with Slap Vandal, so we just trash one program. That can't be bad for us. Mind you, we have one more simul chip somewhere, so we can recover from it. It won't lose us the game, but it's not good. Turn 16. Real grinding this out. What's left in our deck that's interesting? Peach Shalom would be okay. Um, it gets us clicks back, so we can pressure R&D. They have to res. We can just drop the conduit and go, but I'm pretty sure the agendas are in HQ. As much as this would have been a free install next turn, last turn, if we remember to, uh, don't, don't worry about it. Uh, we remember to install our slap handle. I think we just installed the after. There's no way they're over installing the after. Now, boarding control here would be annoying. If they res the boarding control, we force them to res it, and then we just throw in HQ, because they can't res their central ice and res this boarding control, which comes in for like seven, right? Like it's four to res and then three more to install. We'd break it and then just walk away. Uh, but we probably want to win off centrals here. Again, divide by five. Like they have 11, 10 cards left in R&D and only five points of the game out. So HQ is super, super flooded. Could be an agenda. I think we're going to run HQ, run archives. We'll start by running archives. Actually, no, we'll start by running HQ because I'm a virus will purge out the imp. Again, we could go to conduit, but I'm pretty sure all the agendas are in hand. I don't think it's a huge install. Maybe the deck just should have an artist. Just like a click to two credit button is like fine at this point in the game. Just fine. I don't know. I had one in early and like if you draw it early, it's so bad. But it is a nice way to end like a world tree chain. Uh, Cubon also be really good, right? Because then we're running and it's relatively cheap, right? Instead of paying four, we pay two a turn. And then we get the urban art two credits. So it's like a really good install. It's technically a four credit install as long as we're installing stuff. One more click here. They have six cards in hand, right? In terms of the economy, we haven't seen any hedge funds. Some of these decks aren't. They're just playing extract. Upgrade. Okay, so I'm assuming it's a virus. Oh, let's draw for an econ operation. That's good. There's a small chance that we do creative on click two, and then on click four, after this loses a click, we run HQ. I just don't want to face check into a Stavka and it'd be a seven strength Stavka, which currently costs us three, four, five to break. We could like overclock HQ. We definitely want to run once a turn. Yeah, we could run again. This goes, puts us down to zero and then like any ice that they res is a problem. So we'd probably have to safely overclock it. We'll say, assume that we're not going to overclock this remote server anymore. If we run archives, we get some information on what they've thrown out, uh, thinking, and we're scraping the bottom of the barrel here. Now the overclock doesn't work on the after I lose credits because you can only spend these credits, not lose them. So like, it's not great. Now it disincentivizes them from resing, which is quite cute. I think we can consider running R&D, right? As long as we have five credits, we can do credit, credit, run R&D. Oh, that's too many clicks. Um, I think we can let them square out an agenda, no problem. They don't have any more spin doctors, so slash and burns are kind of gone. I think we'll just take a turn off. This is fine. Let's see what they do. My virus into Tukana just thins the deck out and it'll give us some information or Tukana into an agenda will be fine. Uh, the above the law is the only like three, two that gives them forward tempo here. Uh, two damage to our hand is like not amazing, but it's not the worst. And so now the economy and we have in the deck in 16 cards, it is one dirty laundry, one sure gamble. So Svi, okay, good. That will give them some forward tempo, but it'll just re, uh, they're just trashing the rice. I thought they'd trash a reg thing, but they just need more credits here. Wonder why, if they're in biotic. So the Sphi was not bad. Now this might be an agenda here, but now running HQ, we have no worries. We know it's going to be a three credit run. So here we run HQ. We could do install SMC from hand with Arisana and make SMC into um, a Peach Chant, which we pay. It's not great. Ideally, we install SMC and then crack it on their turn. So it's, well, actually, DZ doesn't do anything. But I think we run HQ twice here, maybe win. Okay, so we'll Arsana, slap Vendel on the Afshar, breach. We should steal an agenda here. Virus on imp. So now ZF, we'll steal that. Uh, we can go back. Very likely to win here. Worst case, we can go archives. We want to use the imp. They could purge here with the Mavirus. 
Uh, that's it. Yeah, their hand is probably flooded. GG. I can't believe we missed agendas for so many turns. <laughs> uh, that leg <laughs> real slow down there. Uh, thank you. There must be a bunch, right? Like, maybe there's some in archives. But there was like 10 cards left in R&D and we've only seen two agendas. It doesn't make a lot of sense. One Atlas still. Okay, that checks out. Um, yeah, we have to respect half run. It's like not the easiest thing for the deck to do, especially once we've used two simul chips early. I think like once we get to this point in the deck, like we need slightly more economy left over. Like we do have some good economy here, uh, but the urban art vernissage has run out of value. Uh, it's just a sure gamble. And like maybe we do just have one artist because it is like a late game value option. But it's cool. It works out. The value of proposition worked out. We got some good earth tree value. All right, another op game. Welcome to Fuddruckers, we were told. Uh, this opening hand, what are we talking about? We have Dirty Laundry, Day of the Cast Royal Tree. That seems pretty good. Oh, we slap Bendel for early pressure. Not great against op, but we have to figure out what kind of op this is. Thanks, you too. We'll keep this hand. We added one artist to the deck just so late game we have like a click for two credit button. That's like, okay, I guess. But we generally don't want to draw it anytime soon. It's not a very good card. Ah, we'll keep this. So ideally, we get the world tree down when the daily cast ends unless we draw into something okay. We're going to face check to force them to res some of their ice. I think this is probably a smurf. They're real Fuddruckers themed. Uh, we don't have those in Canada. I think that's a restaurant in America. So double ice, which means if we face check this and they res uh, border control, they go down to two credits after it fires. I think we're okay checking that. I think we'll run that first. Uh, good luck, have fun. Uh, they kept. So we'll challenge this. Uh, no action. So we can generally res one of these. If it's a sandstone, we slap Vandal through and we're through. So now they see no action, we can't respond to get the coupon back onto it. So this is probably a uh, border control, which like we can always slap Vandal that. Uh, no action. We can also tattoo Bola. Oh, sick. So we slap vandal this, we're in. I'm assuming this is a Rashida. Uh, slap vandaling a tattoo Bola is like pretty sad. I think we're okay with them getting, it's either like they get two credits and we lose a slap vandal or they get a Rashida. I think we're okay with them getting a Rashida, unfortunately. So we could consider keeping the dirty laundry, but I think we're going to dirty laundry HQ. I don't think that's an agenda. So we can dirty laundry HQ. We should, we can draw one after that. I don't think it's going to make a huge difference and then install daily cast. Border control. Okay. So they didn't lead with that. So don't know what that is. Could be a border control. But we'll draw once and deal the cast. Pretty sure good if they're assets. They haven't shown their assets. Um, eventually this world trees into like an imp or something for pressure or a breaker. Also love that in a world tree deck. Damn. Okay. So they didn't score this. So I think actually this is something we want to consider contesting. Uh, how do we do that? We could drop world tree, run, get Parisha, trade Parisha for Cleaver. Now this could easily be a Stavka, but I think they top deck that for sure. So I don't think we have to world tree here, but we definitely could. We always can run it and put a cube on in there and that kind of incentivizes them to res. But I think this actually might be an agenda. They score on above the long trash or daily cast. <laughs> We're in a bad spot, that's for sure. So we know they have a border control in hand. We could do world tree, Parisha, trash Parisha, get an imp and get some pressure off on this turn. I think that'd be fine. Like, I think we have to play a bit aggressive into here. It drops us down to low credits, uh, but it's not that bad. We go down to one. Let's draw once for, okay. So that kind of incentivizes us to like run R and D because I don't think they have an agenda in hand. And then we can solve the cube on top of the tattoo bola because if we lose that, it's not the end of the world. And then we can install urban. Uh, if we put on the tattoo bola, they could extract the tattoo bola, but tattoo bola is just so good into Arasana that I don't think you would. Yeah, I think this is fine. And this makes it cheaper to do the world tree. So here we'll Arasana. We'll get the cube on on this. Oh, what? Oh, sorry. Ready, let's go. This has to be a smurf. Yeah, we were meant to run R&D there. I missed. Uh, so we'll do that again. So we'll put the cube on on Tatibola. Read server. Half run. Okay, scary. At least when they draw that, it's useless. So we have to watch, pay attention when they shuffle that back. It's still an okay card. It's like a soft border control. Uh, but in hand is the worst place for that. Okay, so I think we draw once here and drop the urban. This gives them the ability to destroy the Tatibola. We know that they have a half run in hand and they have a border control. I think this could be an agenda. Double advance on six credits. Super cool. Okay, so we'll return this to hand. Okay, so this is the matchup where like you'd rather not have an Amakua, you'd rather have uh, anything else. So if this is an envelopment, it's rezzed for a lot. If it's a Stavka, we have the slap bend on hand. So what we could do is we can install Parisha, install World Tree. We could run, we could go get a cleaver and we could run this. If they res a Stavka, we'd have to slap vandal it. 
Um, but I definitely think we want to run this. I think it's a big Atlas. Uh, so we know this tattoo below. They have a boarding control in hand. So this has to be like better than border control. It could just be a code gate. They didn't res it earlier, which like makes sense. Okay. Thinking this is tricky. How do we deal with this? Like we have so many options here. The world tree comes down for only five credits or sorry, four credits, which is good. So it puts us on three. <laughs> uh, Magnet would actually be really good on the outermost. So they have half run in hand. If it's a Stavka, so be it. But we definitely want to get through this. So Cleaver deals with this. We have to figure out how it deals with this. There's a chance that Slab Vendel just deals with it. If it's a Magnet, it doesn't. Uh, but we're going to be cooked on that line no matter what. So I think we can do World Tree, Parisha, run HQ, get a Cleaver, run Server 1. And then we use our Asana on the Slab Vendel. Let's go. This is a, a wild line, but we are going to Wolf 2 for sure. So Parisha becomes Cleaver. Archer off the top. That's scary. This might be the deck list of the week. Does it have Tattoo Bull in it? It does. Okay, so there's three Archers and two Stavkas if this is the deck list of the week. Which means face checking into this, if it's an Archer, it's really quite bad. That actually could be an Archer. We've seen one Archer so far. This is probably the deck list of the week. Which means the agenda is likely to be an SDS or send a message. Which is a problem. So if it's an Archer, we lose one program. They lose an agenda point. I think we're still going to charge it. If it's a Stavka... We can break one subroutine. Ooh, Gatekeeper. Actually, we're in. So this is not exactly the deck list of the week, but that's cool. So Gatekeeper. So here we're Arasana. This is why we love the bad publicity. Uh, we'll host it on there. They got to do their thing. We'll break one subroutine. We'll break end the run. On Broken Fire. I don't know if it's an SDS, what we steal. Hopefully it's a send a message. But if it's an SDS, I think we get rid of the slap handle. They draw three. They can shuffle some back. So they shuffle back SDS drone deployment. We now know they have an archer in hand with a hostile scored. You're going to have more money too. We could have bounced off of this, but this is probably an agenda. Tattoo Bola. Let's see if they bounce. Breach. SDS. Okay. So we need to steal this here for sure. Uh, Slap Vandal is a bit annoying. We have more of them. I think the Cleaver makes a fair bit of sense. The deck has a lot of barriers in it. Uh, so we'll take down the Slap Vandal. Turns off our Urban Art for Nassage. We have Q-Bonds for that. That's whatever. But we need to scale up to the point that we can deal with uh, Archers relatively soon. Uh, they have the Half Run still in hand, which is really good that we know that. Because the deck was a week only has one, but it doesn't have Gatekeeper. So. And Sol Double Advance here would be pretty frightening. Stand off? Okay, sick. So this is uh, this might be the deck list of the week modified. So when it scores, starting with a runner, trash one stall card. So now archers can be res for free, and there's an archer probably here, because we know they drew it. So we're playing the standoff. Ignore the small text. Um, it's not flavor text. So we can trash one of our installed cards. We like our cards. We're world trees, so they're just going to get a card draw here. Last click, which is the worst time to do it. And so uh, we can pressure off here. I think this is where we get daily cast into Earthrise Hotel. Ideally, we'll put the cube on top of this ice they haven't rezzed. So I think we can, we probably don't draw here because we're going to get the class act down. So I think we're just going to run HQ, run R&D, install the cube on one of those runs, and then click for credit. Uh, we actually will install the cube on first because if it does go down to uh, SDS, it goes down to an SDS. We don't want to put on the res dice, world tree, class act. For free, Tattoo Bola, no surprise. Run R&D. Stavka, ooh, it's very scary. Credit, credit. Uh, and then we draw a bunch. So I don't think we want the Conduit. The deck is on three Mavirus. It's also on Ganked, which is scary, but we'll just get like the good stuff. And hopefully they go a bit slow here, but we're pretty sure that's an Archer. Um, we know they have a Tattoo Bola, which we, at least we can deal with that. So this is frightening. <laughs> okay. Return that to hand. We got a good value engine. Uh, the question is, how quickly can we break an archer? And if not, we're going to lose one of our programs anyways. Man, rude. So how do we deal with this? What are we class acting this turn? I think there's a chance that we install the telework, hit the telework, get rid of it. I don't think we have to world treat this turn. It's so hard to Mavirus uh, to Amaku in this matchup. I wonder if we should just have um. So far, some of the matchups today, we'd like much rather have uh, not Amakua, but we'd rather have uh, Hush. So if that's an archer or a stop guy, we have to break a six or seven strength sentry of which at least two subroutines really, really matter. Uh, they'll trade the standoff for it. Otherwise, we're going to lose one of our breakers. If that's the case, the simul chip needs to come down sooner or later. I don't know what Fuddruckers is. We don't have those in Canada. Yeah, I don't know. I think there's some American here showing. Escape Toronto? Okay. Um, <laughs> so we got to figure out how to do with this. Just jamming agenda after agenda into this ice is really frightening. Now, if we have a simul chip, we could respond to it, but this is definitely an archer. They also have Trojan Horse and Wake Up Call. Like, really nice. I mean, nicer burger place that's more sit-down adjacent. Oh, cool. It has a cookie bakery attached to it. Oh, wild. 
The other option is to just say like, F it, we're gonna go get Imp, which I think is also kind of fair. Uh, we can just get the Cubon down, smash R&D and try and win off of that. Uh, the Cleaver's probably gonna go, so getting a Simul Chip sooner than later is probably important. We have one good draw here with the Class Act. Uh, that will put us on seven cards in hand. We can run, dump the Cubon, install the daily cast and go from there. I think just getting some pressure down, which would be like Cubon, uh, is probably pretty important. I don't think we need more urban. Fawn Mummers, Fud Wreckers. Oh, okay, all right. Uh, I think we're going to go for it. I think we're just going to smash centrals. The Tattoo Bull is in hand. The top of R&D, I, I think they, if they drew multiple agendas, they shuffled one back with Gatekeeper. We knew what they drew into. If I paid attention, we had a Fud Wreckers conversation. Uh, so we're going to go for the Impline. If we get Mavirus, though, it's actually really bad. The deck is on three of them. I don't think we want to pressure Mavirus. Um, okay, so I think we just want to set up for a late game that we're going to lose. Potentially. So we can hit Telework, install Telework, hit Telework. I think Earthrise is pretty good. So that means we can draw ones for sure. Uh, simul Chip is really good. We want to install that so we can respond to their nonsense. So we'll install Simul Chip. Because if they score an SDS, it's fine. If it's a uh, send a message and they res an archer, like, it doesn't actually change that much. It means they can get a further value here. We could run for a single to install the Cubon. That's fine. And then install the Earthrise Hotel for three. I'd argue we just need to get our money up as soon as possible. I think Telework is technically a bit faster and then we can get rid of it next turn. So we'll take our World Tree turn off. This is a very fast deck. We want a medium deck. SDS, okay. So whatever they trash, we'll probably sign much of it back. It's the World Tree. So here we can reinstall it for uh, three credits. I think I'm gonna. We really wanted the simul chip there. Like it's gonna pay for itself for sure. This so simul chip, mind you, is really important in this matchup. They're on game point. So here we have to go aggro. We don't have a card draw here. So if we do telework, telework becomes an earthrise from our deck, which is better than the earthrise from our hand. Uh, we need to get our money up so that we can deal with, uh, what is the cost to break? Oh God, it's gonna be really expensive. So we probably need to keep the Cubon in hand to be able to like get down the, uh, well, we also need to break the gatekeeper, but. I don't think we transition to imp. I think we need the pressure in hand. So let's try once. Well, there's that. So we can do imp run H R and D. I think they could have top deck an agenda there, but we just need to keep the top of R and D clean. The telework is going to become something else. It's going to probably become an earthrise for one. So I think we can do imp run. What are we imping though? Like ice? They have a boarding control in hand. That's probably the most annoying thing we have to deal with. If they install boarding control here though, it's very expensive for them. So I think it's imp run HQ. Then we'll Arasana Cubon on this insufficient MU. Oh, you don't say. Bummer. So this will become a free Earthrise. Might as well imp that. What's the imp doing here? <laughs> Eating at Fud Ruckers. <laughs> All right, let's go. So they have Border Control Tattoo Bolo. It's all advance, advance. Hostile, okay. So the deck doesn't actually have any two pointers. So that's bad publicity, which is sick. Uh, here we're drawing into Peach of Shadows SMC. We have an MU issue. Uh, we need to get a hardware to fix the MU issue, but none of these are fantastic. I think the SMC is the most flexible, but ideally here we need to draw into MU. Uh, we have four MU cards and 39 cards. Uh, we're just gonna get some pressure on. I think here if they had an agenda, this is more important that we steal it than they, which is why they kind of scored it out. Uh, I think we can get rid of the imp. So we want to run R&D. What are we going to world tree here? What are we going to world tree here? I think at this point we have to actually set up breakers. So like we can run R&D, not use the imp, unfortunately. Earthrise will go next turn. We have no rush to do that. So we can install telework, hit telework. I guess we run R&D first click anyways. If it's an SDS, we trash imp. If it's a, they send a message. World tree target. I don't think we world tree here. Uh, I think we will imp that, but then we have to run back. They have one in hand and they have enough money. World Tree Magic is the first time. <laughs> Archer, that's the one that we'd rather imp, I reckon. So here, we could hit Telework, use Telework. I think that's the best we have. Uh, we'll throw out this Telework, which is a bit slower. And next turn, these are going to line up poorly. Well, technically, we don't need to. Don't advance, advance. Okay, good. But they spin Doctored here. They have money, ice on R&D, probably an archer with the standoff. So I don't think they have agendas in HQ. They might on archives. We drew the turbine. Plongi is actually really, really flexible once we get our rig up. 
We get installed a plummet. We don't have MU. I think we bottomed the turbine until we find an MU card. So here the Earthrise becomes another Earthrise for free. I think that's okay. Um, but we just don't have MU here. I think we need one more MU piece in the deck for sure. So we can do Sure Gamble, Run HQ. We know that they have Tattoo Bola, Archer, Archer. So Tattoo Bola, Archer, Border Control, and then some unknown stuff. I'd consider running Archives. I'm not sure what that is. But I think we just want to set up for a late game. The problem is like MU is an issue. So the Imp can go, no problem. Uh, I think that's totally fine going. It's nice to keep it around so SDS is like we have a target as much as there's only one more SDS. So we don't have to play around it that hard. Because if they score, we they lose. Or they win. Uh, so we just want to keep our money up so we can transition to SMC uh, Turbine. Oh, we bottomed our Turbine. <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't have done that. Okay. Sure gamble. I think I'd rather run Archives. If they had an agenda, they would have jammed it. So running R&D or running Archives is more uh, important than running HQ, especially without an imp. Let's try once here. Ordering Scuffed. Overclock. Uh, that's really nice with SMC. It means we actually can deal with Archer okay. Uh, but we still have an uh, MU issue. Yep, still have an MU issue. We'll install the daily casts. Discard a card here. Probably this Earthrise. We're not going to install before the game's over. Here they can install Advance Advance Worst Case, which means they probably top decked it. Uh, they're going to spin back. Mind you, we saw half run in the bin. Oh, we forgot about that one. Spin Doctor and Border Controller back in. So we think they have another border control in hand. Do they have the money to do border control into Archer? Which ooh, is pretty hard. Now they have no way to like speed up advancements. So if this is, they have to score out another 5-3. So I don't think we have to run this even if they advance it. If this is the deck list of the week. Okay, ice everywhere. So that's more likely to be a regolith. They also have NGO front, which is frightening. So we'll do Earthrise Hotel. Fine, it's an MU card. <laughs> Not like that. <laughs> Not like that. Um, okay. This opens up one MU, so it's probably worth something. Because it means that we can install this, run archives, install the Cubon, like we can do something. But next turn they might advance, advance, advance. So if that's the case, we can always trade knob curry to DZ, which is like whatever. But here we probably do telework. What are we trying to draw into the resources? Like artist is probably a bit too slow. Uh, Nuka might actually be okay that we just have to draw through our deck fast enough. Um, so if we hit telework, we probably hit telework this turn. So we need more MU. Cubon comes down for 14. Now we could run archives, get artist for free, and then use artist to install this for four. Man, I can't believe I'm considering the artist. Yeah, I guess so. We don't need the imp counter this turn. We'll use the artist to install. I think the simul chip is more important here. Because uh, we need to be able to run this next turn. So we just need to prepare to be able to run this. So we now have no more MU. We can install the knob Kree next turn. I think the best thing we could do is click for two credits. Uh, now they might have a virus uh, locked here, but we'll cleaver into Polongi from hand means we can break this. We're assuming that's border control, gatekeeper, uh, archer. So we'd have to break it twice. So that means that cleaver Polongi doesn't deal with it unless we simul chip shuffle it. Uh, I don't think we want to install the knob Kree here because we want to have as much money as we can. I think we actually do uh, hit the artist and throw out the cube on. Overclock's good. We'll do it after the boarding troll. Order doesn't really matter, but it gives them less information to work with on the first run. Extract, just getting rid of that for six credits. Advance, advance. Okay, so they have 16 credits. Uh, half run, counted for. All right, this is, this is it. So we have the DZ. We have no functional MU. We can use the artist to install a DZ. We have to run this twice. We have to be able to deal with this archer. Our echelon here is, okay, thinking. So this is, you know, this is it. We have to deal with gatekeeper twice. We have to deal with border control once. We have to do archer twice. So lots of math. We're pretty sure it's border control and the gatekeeper into archer. If it's double archer, it's fine for them because they go down to four score, they go to seven. Now this could be NGO front, no matter what, we're still going to go for it. So we can install Echelon. Um, that's something. Uh, we have to trash the imp, that's whatever. We can install DZ Echelon with the artist. So that puts us back four. Then we have to run, run. So we break this. How do we deal with the gatekeeper? We can install Polongi from hand. How do we do deal with the archer? That's the question. This comes in at make one century separate team. <laughs> That's all we're interested in. 
So it's going to come in at, we'll have two breakers. I think we just do it. I think we just believe in ourselves. I think we install this from hand and just go. We'll overclock on the second. I think 17 credits is probably enough. If this is a scary century, so be it. Echelon's pretty rough here. We will not be doing that. What? We'll compute the bill for you. Okay, second stop got seven strength. This is only for the run, though. So, gotta figure out how to break that. So, we don't need the cleaver anymore. So, to break this is 11. <laughs> if we let it fire, they can trash two of our breakers. We have one simul chip. So we have to figure out how to get through the gatekeeper, which we could by reinstalling the echelon. So we know there's no border control here. We actually can't get in here. So if we let the Stavka fire. We lose two programs. It'll probably be Cleaver Echelon. Then we hit the gatekeeper. We use Simul Chip to reinstall the echelon. And then we use Plongi from hand. And I think we get through. I think we let this fire. I think there's a chance. This has to be an agenda. Okay, we lost what we thought we lost. That's fine. Continued encounter. So now we're here. So we'll Simul Chip. We're pretty sure that's an archer for the echelon. Well, Arsana for Plongi. Uh, sorry, I, uh, I'll do this on encounter. Yeah, you want to do this on encounter. This is not a virus, but if you don't do it on encounter, they can purge you. So it's a gatekeeper. We'll make it a uh, sentry. We'll break it for one. And now this archer we should be able to deal with. And then we can make the Plongi into a... Uh, with world tree. Let's see what we got. We think it's an archer. It's an archer. Pretty sure we break that incredibly expensively, but we don't lose the game. So that's like a cool thing we got going for ourselves. This Plongi is going to trash itself. Ow, my money. All right, we're in. World Tree. I think we'll get rid of the Plongi. Uh, we can pay all our money to get out. What do we want to get out here? We can get the Earth Rise for another Earth Rise. That's a bit expensive. We need, they're going to just jam next turn, right? So Stavka will be two. That's fine. Uh, so I think here we probably just trade the Plongi, which is going to leave us, for a turbine going down to zero. Send a message. Oh, sick. Nothing to res. We're both on game point here. I'm going to click the artist for $2. <laughs> okay, we got a game of Netrunner Fun Rockers. This is cool. All right. We're, we're, this is not an easy matchup. So now they're on five, right? So was, if they don't install advance, advance, we're okay. So now we have to recover. Uh, Earthrise is going to end. That's fine. We don't need a world tree. We just want to recover here. So there's a chance that we're going to get the knob Kree down and put pressure on HQ. We have to play around Trojan horse and wake up call. So keeping our money up is actually probably a bit more important than being aggressive here. Uh, we have an MU issue. That's for sure. But I think all here we want to do is recover. So we like can hit the artist. Uh, we can credit, credit, creative commission, and then just get ready for the next push. Uh, border controls are a problem. The other line is a bit more aggressive, right? Is like to run. We don't have any, um, What's it called? Uh, we definitely hit this. We don't have any. Oh, we probably want to do actually run HQ here and trade the daily cast into. Uh, this is too icy. They trashed. I don't care about that. Uh, we want to trade the daily cast into uh, telework, right? We have more of those. No, we don't. Oops. Well, we can trade it into a daily cast at a minimum. So this will become a daily cast. It's a border control. That's really frightening. Um, there's no way around that. That's something that you'd want to imp. I think we just do credit creative. If they do border control next turn and they install it, they can't actually jam an agenda if this is close to the deck list of the week. Uh, so we'll do something like that. I just keep our engine alive and running. Edge. That's the border control. That's a problem. We don't have hush. Hush would mean a lot here. I think we want to consider running our D. The problem is if it is a Stavka or an Archer. Uh, Archer puts them still on game point, which is not great for us. Uh, so here we want to just continue to set up for the war. Uh, we definitely want a DZMZ. Uh, we have one, sorry. We definitely want to get the Knob Kree down and just put some pressure on HQ. So I think here we can get the Knob Kree down. It'll cost us only four credits with the artist. We can run HQ. We have nothing really to trade for something else. Uh, this will open up one MU, which is not a lot. We'll drop first. Second DZ is actually good. Another sure gamble is obviously pretty good too. But the DZ, we're going to need the MU, right? Maybe. <laughs> I'm not actually sure what to draw here. This is a really important uh, draw. Because ideally, we get the Knob Kree to get the imp pressure. Uh, we also can win with Knob Kree Conduit. We haven't seen enough of viruses yet. Uh, but we'd have to run this probably next turn where they do install Advance Advance. So we have a reason to run HQ to find an agenda. 
So if we go for the sure gamble, we just have more money and money does beat the server as much as we need to get as many programs installed because of Archer. So I think there's a chance here that we like go for the DZ because like we want to get down an SMC and turn an SMC into a breaker. So I think for that reason, we probably want the DZ. I don't honestly know what we're going to world tree. We can probably get rid of this. The best thing it gets us is breakers. So like we might want to just trade an imp for a breaker and set up for that. I think that probably makes sense. Like get a buzz software free. Yeah, I think we do that. I don't think we need the imp pressure that much. Um, that will be entirely free. So we can just run HQ here. Uh, let's run HQ. Let's transition into real breakers. The deck probably only on one code gate, but we want to deal with it. This will become a buzzsaw. Some a virus. Uh, will we trash that? It turns on like Trojan horse already. It turns on wake up call. I don't think we have to trash this. It can become a two Kana. It can become a two cost ice, which like could be a tattoo bola. We mind you don't have a cleaver. I forgot about that. Oh man, we only have one simul chip. Actually, we have some issues. <laughs> we got to go find slap vandals. We have to find a way to deal with barriers. We definitely need another breaker. I think we'll trash this because Amaku is actually like a line. Because Amaku on six is the easiest way that we deal with the server. So we trash that. We have two clicks left. Um, we haven't used the artist, so we'll probably use the artist. And then I think we'll just get a DZ down. Okay, artist has felt okay, honestly. We've definitely got our money worth. Draw. So we have to worry about install advance, advance. So this we actually don't have to run. So unless they have any sort of like acceleration, we don't have to run this here. This is more likely to be an NGO front or we have another turn. So the worst case would be another border control advance. If that's the case, like we probably should consider running R&D. Uh, Echelon boosts well into Archer. We break it for six bad into Stavka. So the next thing we could do is like get down Knob Curry and then like trade an SMC from hand into Stavka. We have no more viruses. So this Knob Curry actually, we only have one more MU. All right, we'll draw. Overclock or creative. We already have one overclock. Uh, so there are a couple of agendas here. The deck only has like eight agendas. One, two, three, four, five, six so that we actually want to steal, not including standoffs. So the density on R&D is pretty high. Or sorry, it's pretty low. Uh, here, what do we do? I think we consider installing the Knob Curry. The problem is like we don't have that many viruses. So like, because this is one, two, three, four, five. SMC will be like straight up just an issue. We have to find the last DZ. I think the deck needs like one more MU card for sure. Uh, we could also trade the daily cast into a Nuka just to go deeper through a deck. That might be fine. I think we could run R&D here. If they res, I think we're relatively happy. And just go for a single. Uh, we just don't have like a really good Arasana target. We, yeah, we just one MU short of it. And now the Knob Creed doesn't matter because we have no uh, viruses installed. Let's try it once more for uh, Trojan. Oh, actually, that's nice. So now we use this. To get the DZ down, and now we can run, install the SMC, and use the SMC to get a conduit would be like a nice fork, because if they continue to advance and protect this, uh, I think that's a nice fork. As much as we don't have knob curry. But that's a way that if they try and score out, we can pivot R&D. Uh, no action. Gatekeeper. Nice. Okay, that's a one credit break later on. So here... We can SMC to go get clicks back. Um, I don't think we generally want to do that this turn. We break this for free next turn. So we might have a window next turn to do Knob Creek Conduit. So here we're going to use our Asana, stall an SMC. That eats our DZ trigger, unfortunately. And we'll use SMC to search our stack for program here. And I think we'll go for Conduit. It's pretty expensive, but we have bad publicity. It just puts us away off the server. Target for World Tree. Oh, shit. Sorry. I did that so wrong. That's why. We were meant to world tree that, not actually crack it. That's why it was so expensive. That seemed really weird. I was like, I feel like we're overextending. I think I've figured out why. Because this still works. So Arsana, SMC, Breach, World Tree. Because then this comes in for one instead of six. Uh, so we'll go Conduit. Rego. I'm okay with them drawing that. Conduit gets a counter. Because even though it wasn't their successful run, and now they have to ice R&D up, they do double advance. They're threatening to win here versus there. So, all right, we got a game. So the only bad thing for us is they are on two more Mavirus. The win is here behind, behind border control. We only have to break border control once. <laughs> but we have to figure out the math and what it takes to run border control. So border control, we have to break somehow. We actually don't have a good way of doing it. 
Uh, we get like pull SMC from hand, slap bend, will break it once, they get a lot of money. Then we break this for two, this for one. So that's most of bad publicity plus one. And then Archer, unfortunately, is uh, gonna be three, four, five, six, seven. Not great. As much as we can overclock that on the run back, because we have to do it twice, right? If they res the boarding control, they actually don't have enough money to score out. We're assuming this is the boarding control. If it's an archer, they also don't have the money to score out. So we're assuming it's the NGO front. So we have two lines. I got two wolves to talk to. So there's a couple lines here. First line is force them to spend more money than they have resing the ice here, because we're assuming that this is a four cost ice. Uh, <laughs> so that's one option. Uh, the second option is to tunnel RD. If we install the knob curry with the artist, we actually see a lot of cards because every run on R&D is really free. Uh, we don't have a way to pull imp back, but we also can trash one of our breakers, uh, including the world tree to go get uh, the thing that sees more cards. Uh, I think I'm going to do wolf two here. That's the hungry wolf. It is a Fuddruckers. <laughs> All right. So I think we probably slam R&D here. So that means that we want to get down our knob curry. We have no way of doing that well. Besides that. And so now that we want to get SMC from hand to go get a peach Chan, we can do it with bad publicity. We can do it. <laughs> Pretty sure this is CTZ. Um, so we can figure out a couple ways of doing it. If we start smashing R&D, we can get through uh, a couple times. We get peach Chan from hand and we trash one of our breakers. Trashing one of our breakers is bad. I think we can get rid of the world tree, no problem. So if we get rid of the world tree, we install SMC, we use SMC for Peach Chan. I think that's how we do it. I don't think we have an overclock here. We just conduit run. So we make a run on R&D here. So we probably could run this remote server. We just need to force it. Last click, we can run and force a res. Well, we have to do last two clicks because if it's border control crack, actually, no, that's interesting. The problem here is we're going to use our ability. So Peach Chan, we don't have to do now. Uh, we can do it. Peach Chan costs what? One? It costs one. So we can save money by installing SMC with our Asana. So we'll break this for one. Oops, one counter. We'll break this for one. It's bad publicity. We'll use our Asana to install SMC from hand. We'll breach server. We'll world tree the SMC for a peach Chan, which we'll put on this so we can go real wolf. Uh, we'll do knob create to put on the conduit. We just want to win. Woo! That was wild. That, that was wild. There was a boarding show. We called it standoff. It was an NGO front and Phil rig. Oh, nice. Uh, you went wolf one. That I think that's wolf two. <laughs> this is a mean list. I think that's CTC. I'm pretty sure, but good game. So that was our next line after that point, right? Like we haven't seen the NGO fronts, but there's not a lot of agendas left in the game, but now we run our ND and mind you, the fact that density is standoff doesn't count as an agenda. It still means we can see deeper and deeper here, but we can just like send it back and back and back and back. There's also some chance they use DZ and you world tree DZ to go get, um, that actually might've made sense too, is that we could have considered world treeing the DZ MZ optimizer and then going to get a simul chip and using simul chip to reproduce an imp. And that actually is like a kind of cool line because maybe we'll see one or two cards deeper potentially. And sometimes that all that matters is on this turn, right? Like we can get rid of the turbine. It doesn't matter if we think we're going to lose here, but it turns out it's an NGO front. So locking the top of the deck as much as uh, my viruses will matter. We would have seen a lot of cards, mind you. The next couple runs are free. So my virus will reset us, but we're going to see four new cards there because we stole and stole. Let's do another one. This is wild. So Ag Infusion, uh, we just played against the James Legere. We lost on like turn four, hit a behold. Economic warfare, trash or resources, game's over. Uh, this is probably the punitive ag infusion. Uh, I'm not sure the last list looked like. I think they have pivot in them. But the idea is that like we can die to punitive really quickly. So we can scale into the late game. Like we do have an engine. We don't deal with the anoetic well, but we can get our breaker suite up. The question is how soon? Uh, so looking at this, uh, this is not a great hand. We have creative earth rise as an opening, but DZ conduit. DZ's nice to have open. We're going to mulligan this. Hopefully something better. That's a... That's a hand. All right. So the big problem is like running archives is an issue where they can feed you six points of agendas when you hit a bacterial reprogramming and then punitive with a Fuji after that or another bacterial. Um, assuming that's what this list is. It usually is. It's the sort of list that like Augustus Caesar won Italian Nationals with. Uh, so Hansei start. We just have to not die to punitive really soon. Now, in theory, eventually we get down an imp and we're in an okay spot. We don't want to really run that. I don't know what server one is. What's server one? 
Spin? Spin. Early spin. The jam mull? They kept. Oh wow, spin's gone. So they fixed the hand already. So I think here we're just gonna do more money card draw and start from there. We just need to set up our breakers as soon as possible. It's a bit clumsy. Uh, we need to get the world tree down sooner than later, that's for sure. But they don't have a card face down in archives, which is what we're scared of. Regenesis is like the really big thing. So uh, they could big deal out. Usually the decks have one, but more importantly, they won't do it that soon. So maybe this is a totally different deck. Looks like Rashida. Get two cards. Slap handle means we can charge it. If it is unfortunately, uh, what's it called? Uh, a non seat's a problem. If it's a Vampire Nas, that's not great. I think it's our best interest just to continue to set up a bit. Now, if they spend a lot of money, mind you, Ag Infusion, if they res one big ice, we're in a bad spot. So we just need to get to a point here. And we don't have a real reason to run archives. We can install the Cuban and then like urban it back, which helps us install other stuff. We spend two clicks and two credits to gain two credits of installing. It's only probably good if we have a dirty laundry, some reason to check archives. Uh, so I think we're just going to draw up, get some money because we have Earthrise cards coming in. So I think we can do the slow econ play. Like, I don't think we have to gamble here. We can just hit this. Probably see Rashida here. Yeah, there you go. But our breaker suite, like, is pretty important that we get down, uh, like, Turbine and a lot of other stuff. So if we don't go out John to SMCs, like, we need to get down our, uh, our world tree, which at least with open archives is doable. Ice and R&D, mind you, they can only res usually one piece of ice. Once they do, though, Ag Infusion makes it an issue. Okay, so defensive upgrades, probably Anoetic. Some Adrian's. Okay, hey, yeah, actually, that's uh, that's definitely something. So what's our first card draw card? I don't know if we go for right away. I think we go for the artist, as weird as that is. But they need to stop us from running. So if we hit telework, we install World Tree. We trade the telework for the artist. I mean, like, okay. Now we could do the Earthrise here. It's going to leave next turn. So Breach Server, I think we need more money than we need card draw. Uh, we have a lot of money in our hand. So the Earthrise would probably become another Earthrise. That makes the most sense. Or we can go the Class Act. Then we have a lot of cards in hand, but we can play most of the cards. Yeah, let's do this. This is fun. And then here we probably create a commission. We can install the Urban Art Vernissage, which means we have some cheaper installables. I don't think they will trash this ice on HQ, but they definitely could. Next turn we'll be on five credits. Save the ice HQ. Another Rashida would be bad for us. We can at least discard some of these cards, but we definitely need our MU, which we don't have enough in the deck. Subliminal, okay, we want to be running. That's okay, we have World Tree. It says that we want to do that. They first click Subliminal. You don't often want to do that, right? Like if you draw into a Hansei here, um, advance, advance. Okay, that's just an agenda. We're okay with it. If it's an NGO friend, we're okay with it. But if they score out like a Fuji here or Bacterial, I think we're fine with it. Second ice. So maybe they're actually just scoring out. It's not a punitive list. I think that early, uh, what's it called? Shows that early spin doctor. Okay, we get the cube on back. We have this many cards in our hand. So here we probably trade our telework into something. Unless we want to trade our cube on into something. But I think we trade our slap vandal into something. We can consider running this. If this is an anoetic, they can only fire it once. But we have our echelon in hand. We definitely have need more MU. That's a big problem, uh, thinking. And we definitely want to run, which shouldn't be an issue. So we can trade telework into daily cast at a minimum. That's good. So instead of gaining three credits here, we can gain six credits clicklessly. That's pretty good. Uh, what else do we want to do then? We install the Cuban to cycle this. I think we can get the Echelon down before we lose it to damage to a Fuji. That would be like maybe the worst case. So just keep doing our thing. So we'll get the Cuban here. We'll breach server. We'll trade the telework for casts. There's a small chance. I think, uh, I think, uh, artist is a bit too slow here. We ideally don't want to draw into it. We can throw this world tree. So I think we just installed the Echelon. Oh, that gunks up our MU a bit, but we'll draw into an MU card. And next turn, we'll click to draw and we'll get class act draw. We could have done this turn. We'll get this down. We're just trying to get to speed as fast as possible. Let's see what they score out here, right? Like off world would be not great. Five advance is good for us. That's a Fuji. That's fine. We lost Slap Bandle and World Tree. Slap Bandle is not the greatest, but we kept our cards and they just scored a tempo negative agenda. Uh, largely. We bring this back. Sorry, Urban. Casts. We'll draw once here. We want to do the filter draw. There's the artist. We don't want to draw her. Ideally, the daily cast becomes her. We have overclock. On seven credits, there's only one ice they can res we're scared of. So we could use that information to charge server two to deal with the defensive upgrade before it becomes a problem. Uh, what can we break, mind you? Not, next to nothing, honestly, but they don't know that. But if they res an Atini, a Vampir, a Nasa, a Tattoo Bola, uh, some of those are worse than others. At least they go down to zero credits, which is kind of okay with us. We want to be making a run. Let's draw for an SMC here or something. A buzzsaw from hand. 
Now, if we install that, yeah, we have an MU issue. Do we have a class act here? It would probably be the Cubon, but Cubon is doing the urban art stuff. So if we install the buzzsaw, we need MU really bad. So if we install the buzzsaw, we could overclock. We can beat Vampire and Asa a teeny. We just can't build Tattoo Bola. I think that's fair. Our MU is messed up though, so we turned off our, uh, our Asana. That's okay, we'll charge server two. So here, the only thing they can res, actually no, if it's a uh, echelon at two strength means we can beat Sysenton, which is good. But we just want to deal with this upgrade sooner than later. Also, if they res here, right, like Ag Infusion is a bit more relevant. I wonder if we want to force a res on Central sooner. But they could technically redirect this run, actually, last click, if they trash this ice. Uh, that's maybe a reason not to overclock. This overclock's only good if they res in like an Atini or a, a Vampronasa, because it is very expensive. It's Anemone. Okay. Keep the turbine. We lost the turbine. It's okay. It's good to know. So we do break that for one. <laughs> Get to use our overclock credits. They trashed a card too. So we're assuming this is too expensive for them. Target for World Tree. Uh, no. We could do the urban actually. We probably should just to get more card draw because we'll get another one down and we're not actually using it. It's a bio vault. Okay. Wow. So true glacier. Good to get that down. We'll end our turn. We have two cards in hand. I don't think they're going to be able to capitalize on that, but now we know what the remote server is and they don't have a lot of money. So they need an econ card. They also discarded a card. So checking archives, worrying about bacterial punitive is interesting. And Nemini doesn't often see play in those lists. So there's let alone bio vault. So I think this is just like ag glacier, which eventually we will be able to catch up to, I think. Six, so they still can't res this too well. We get Earthrise, Daily Cast. So we found Nob Kari, which is not exactly MU, but it's the closest thing we have to MU. Uh, we have no viruses installed. I think we'll bottom this lap. So we can run this click one. Uh, we don't have anything that we want to become into something else. We could always use the Simul chip and make it into a DZMZ or a Cyberdelia. I think that would actually be pretty reasonable. So we could do like Simul chip, run archives, run server two. What else does the Cyborg chip give us? Not much, right? Like, oh, actually the turbine seems kind of important into this sort of deck. Let's try once then. Oh, well, there you go. Now we'll run server two. The Cubon on this will probably get trashed. Uh, so I think we Cubon on this. That being said, you don't want to Cubon. Oh, wow. Uh, sorry. Yeah, technically they have to wait for us to say no priority because during approach we have priority so we can install something on there to beat it. Uh, it is just a brawn though. We're not going to deal with that anytime soon. Do we want to spend through a click to lose the separate on this ice, install a piece of ice from HQ archives directly inward? I honestly think we do just because they might have, might have a face down ice there. And then that means that the server uh, requires two runs. So I think we actually click through this. We don't get our ability. D said we don't need to get the cube on out. So I think we're just going to click through this once. Slap Vandal, mind you, deals with this. Okay. Uh, so we're going to break this one because that's a really important one. So now this has to be Rashida for them to be happy. Or I guess a bio vault, but Rashida would be really bad for us. Shit. All right, they're on three credits. Now they can always throw us with Ag Infusion into here. If they don't jam, uh, we're definitely gonna be running HQ because they've gone through a lot of cards. They've shuffled, I think one face down. So the agendas have to be somewhere. So if they go advance, advance here, they're just threatening NGO front. If they do install draw. Yeah, I've done that so many times. Or you forget after Rashida is mandatory. We've all been there. Okay, Daily Cast is the next target running archives. I think we run HQ. If they trash HQ ice to put us into Brawn, that's totally fine. Um, I think if they have an agenda, probably would go in there. So at least this, maybe as an upgrade. I'm worried about hitting another Fuji because the Knob Kari seems important. But ideally, this Earthrise Hotel draws into something that we can use. Okay, that's good. So that means that they've turned, on their, turned off their Ag Infusion ability. That's really important to keep an outermost. Okay, Parisha is something we can install with Arasana and make it into an imp, which means we can get pressure onto HQ. We don't want the conduit anytime soon. So this will be cool, right? So now we can install the knob Kari. We can run HQ. We don't want a dirty laundry because they could throw us into the server, which would be bad. Uh, then we can install Parisha from our hand and World Tree into the Parisha. It's like really rough to put cube on an unres dice, but we're going to go HQ and do some damage. The other option is to actually get rid of the daily cast. That probably makes more sense. Yeah, because these are going to go. I don't know if we need the imp now. Do you think we need the imp? I like the imp pressure. Uh, no action. So we could Arasana here to install the Prisha to world trade the Prisha. Otherwise, the daily casts, we might have overextended here, but the daily cast, I think we would still want to play around Fuji. Uh, the daily cast can become another daily cast. That's probably good enough. Reach server. Our daily cast can become daily casts. 
hedge fund. Uh, we would have loved to imp that actually. It's not too late. <laughs> it is too late actually. Uh, what are we talking about? Uh, so we made our successful run, which is good. We got value from that. We can do credit credit. There's one face down in archives. I don't know if we know what it is. If it's a regenesis, maybe we should respect it. Dirty laundry is a card that we want to use next turn for um, our run if we're going to check archives, but there's a small chance it's like regenesis. We lose the game. Are we going to respect that? I don't think they throw out an agenda when we're on a, what's it called? A world tree deck. We're running archives makes a lot of sense. So let's just hope that they're on glacier, not regenesis because we could lose this turn. Uh, just do credit credit. Maybe teller could have been better than cast then because we can empty in two turns because we have no target next turn. I will go for an imp. All right. Hedge fund, right? It has to be. Yeah. Shit. Well, oh, I'm imping that hedge fund would have been huge. So now they have nine credits, so they can largely res anything. Daily cast, so we don't need that. Oh, we drew the artist. Actually, it might have been better to bottom the artist uh, because having the artist in hand means we have to pay four as opposed to getting it for one. Yeah, that can't be right. Do you mind? So start a turn. Earthrise. We're going to bottom the artist. And so the question is, what are we going to trade up in value? I think there's a big chance that we want to run HQ here. Uh, we don't break barriers. If it is an Anansi, they spend a lot of money and then we break it for a lot of money. So I think that that's the case. We'll start by just overclocking HQ. Uh, they don't know what we're capable of. We have a simul chip. We probably could install the simul chip first, just in case it's a panic, but we'll overclock HQ. They could throw us into another server. It is what it is. It's a thimble rig. Oh, cool. So we'll break that for one. They can move it. So now the Brown's on HQ. Okay. We could contest server two, but that's a good way to protect that. So now are we, should we be simul chipping for an imp? Should we be trading our Parisha for an imp? I think we should. So we're going to use Arsana to install Parisha. We're going to breach server. We're going to world tree the Parisha. We're going to get an imp and we're going to imp a coaching. Okay. That seemed important. Now we can run this server. Uh, we've done our value. We can get Cubon on this and run. We can Cubon on this, click through it. That's not that great. I think we just continue to draw. Uh, we need to get more card draw. We need to get more credits. Uh, we're sort of close to having a full rig because the imp at some point can just become uh, what's it called a turbine. And then we're kind of like late game shaper. We just need to get like the artist and the infinite value engines. Uh, I think we'll click for credit here. I don't think we really want dirty laundry archives. Uh, next is like probably pressure R&D. Let's see if they start scoring out. This could be a deck that's on like vulnerability audit. But as soon as they ice up HQ, right? They turn off the Bron Hansei. Okay, so we should check archives. There's one unknown. They actually just turned off Ag Infusion, right? Like a lot of times you want this on the outside. Being said, it's still hard enough for us to check. We'll draw once. Amaku, we haven't seen a single Mavirus. Silent Chip has a lot of value. I don't know if we need the Amaku here. It's really good with Knob Curry though, especially for running archives. Yeah, let's do it. So here we can install Amaku for two. We have all this extra MU. We can dirty laundry archives. We don't really have anything to world tree unless we want to install this for six, which seems pretty rough. So we probably don't world tree this turn. We could world tree the Cuban. I just don't think we need another program here. Let's just keep them off of their, uh, what's it called? If we find them a virus here, but it keeps them off subliminal. So we'll world tree, no. We'll place a virus counter on Makua. We see Anemone, we knew that. And another Hansei, I think they Hansei to Hansei? So we're in 14, if we build up on Makua, we're at three strength. Six strength means we deal with the Braun relatively well. I think we can just build up on Makua counters. We don't have really a draw engine here. But running archives means they have to deal with archives sooner than later. It's on their like to-do list for sure. But this Amaku next turn will be at like five strength, which means we can face check anything besides Bron. We can deal with uh, Teenies, Vampies, uh, just Bron six strength. Anansi is really important. That means they don't have a lot of money. What's in server two? I think it's a defensive upgrade. Worried about Bio Vault. Could just be an anemone or sorry, uh, an anemonetic void chilling in there. And this is where they do install advanced events and say like deal with this now. Oh, they did install draw. I think we just check the server. We can always like put the cube on top of the thimble rig uh, and go through it, make some money. We can run archives first to get the five strength. If it's a Mavirus, that's okay. We can always panic slap Vandal. So we'll draw once. Uh, Urban's good. We'll run archives. Daily cast becomes something else. So we'll do Knob Curry on Amakua. Uh, daily cast. I think we'll become the artist here. I think we just need like value. Mind you, Earthrise Hotel is pretty good though. Yeah, that's probably better. I just don't want to draw this thing. We never draw it though. So we'll run server two. See how things go. We still have Arasana. Uh, no action. So they can throw us to another server. Then we run back. It's just a thimble rig. If this is a Manigar Manoetic, we can deal with most of it. We can imp one part of it. Uh, they throw us here. Technically, we're out here, so we can jack out. And then we can run this server. 
because it puts you on the outermost. That arrow is technically incorrect. So they can pay for an anoetic here. They'll have their whole hand. Uh, so we're going to do continue encounter ice. We still have the MU. Now if they purge, it doesn't do anything, which is a nice safety valve. So yeah, with Ag Infusion, it says once per turn, instead of resing an approach piece of ice, don't you encounter brand? I encounter the outermost, which isn't rezzed. You need the outermost to be rezzed always. You don't have the op. No, no, because I encounter, not approach. If it was approach, not only could you res, but I could jack out. Totally. They missed how the Ag Infusion worked, so we're going to undo the click. So now if they res a big piece of ice like a Vampir Nasa and they purge, that's a bit annoying. Uh, we break this for four. Uh, do we want to break all the subroutines? Runner loses two. That's cheaper to break. Them gaining two. Their money's not good. Do two net damage. Uh, yeah. You may draw one or two. I think we're going to Arsana this now. So we'll put the cube on on it because they won't trash this anytime soon. And we'll break this for four, which is only two. So we're through. Thimble Rig for one. They can move their ice around. Ideally, their Vampir Nasa is in a good position. It's a bummer about the cube on for them, for sure. We can break this with Amaku or the other one. And now they can res Anoetic Managarm. Uh, they're doing Anoetic. So we can run back here. It only costs us three credits. And they cannot protect the server again. So they're going to swap. Oh, that's really good. Really good. Okay. So this cost them their whole hand. Okay. Very cool. So now we have to deal with the bronze somehow. Uh, we Bellsaw gets a five strength. We only have one turbine in the list. So Braun always costs us like four credits, which is like not the end of the world. Here we can consider, they haven't used their ability yet. So if we run R&D, they throw us into Vampir and Asa. I think if they do that, that's fine. This has to be Rashida. Otherwise they're not doing much. If they do advance, advance next turn, like we can still charge this. So thinking. So our options are like get the urban back, which is whatever. Uh, dirty laundering R&D is a bit scary because they could crack this. They discarded two from hand. So there might be agendas in there. So we could like respect in theory, uh, there might be a buy vault in there, but we could respect Regenesis. They don't have Regenesis money. Let's just run R&D. If they trash an ice to throw us into Vampir Nasa, we'll pay two. It's fine. I think a Chocobi in the deck might make sense too. This is also is good because we get our imp. We can trash the top of the deck if we think it's worth trashing. Tattoo Bola. Uh, we're just going to let that fire. They have no money now. Cool. So now we can HQ pressure whatever they top deck. Like we can just imp that. Uh, Tattoo Bola is a bit of a bummer. We don't have Hush. You don't, you kind of like Hushing Tattoo Bola if you can. But they're gonna do a swap. Nice. So now draw, draw. So running HQ here is cool. If they don't have a piece of ice, the tattoo bullet doesn't do actually we could have gone through the tattoo bullet because they had no wait. I should have I forgot you had no hand. Yeah, with the tattoo bullet, we definitely should have gone through it because they had no hand. So this obviously can't fire. They have to swap it with a piece of ice. They can't just gain four credits. Uh that's fine. That's on us. So we'll draw up. This is a very important remote server. I don't think we need the nuka soon, but nuka actually is a resource. I think we'd rather have the telework. So got to figure out what to do here. Running archives, we can get Amaku to seven. If we run R&D, we definitely want our urban art down at some point. I think we can just dirty laundry uh, archives. We can charge the imp. We can run HQ, hope that they don't have a piece of ice. If they do, they're back in the game, sort of. Uh, I think we'll start by running HQ. I don't think we'll dirty laundry it though. We just need to put enough pressure on. Conduit's the only way we win. We're at a point where we actually consider transitioning to conduit, right? We could actually, like we could just trade the slap vandal into a conduit. This might be not the right play. We, they didn't res anything there on one. Doesn't make sense that they do. I think we'll go through here. Let's see if they have an ice in hand. If they do, we can imp the tattoo bullet potentially. They definitely need the money here. They actually might've been wrong run. I'm just hoping they didn't draw into ice. These decks usually have a lot of ice though, considering face down ice has good value in ag infusion. They do shit. <laughs> Reach server. Uh, world tree. Oh, I should have Arsana at first for Conduit. Uh, we have no MU though. Yeah, I missed that. So we're not world treeing this turn? We could trade Simul Chip into... Oh, we have a Turbine in the bin. We could trade Simul Chip into uh, Cyberdelia. We have a Simul Chip in hand. That actually might be right. Yeah, I'll do it. It won't fire this turn, unfortunately. So Tattoo Bullet will imp that. Okay, so on five credits, we could run back. We've made our one successful run of the turn. Install Telework, hit Telework is our next turn after that. But here we can run HQ. We just want them to overextend and spend too much money on HQ that we can threaten to uh, install a Slap Vandal from hand and then pull out, uh, what's it called? Admittedly, Conduit will move this stuff around, which will be a problem. Let's see what they can res here on five. Cool. The Warhol deck. Oh, super cool. <laughs> 
All right, that's a fun surprise. Uh, can they protect their borehole? Six is so much to trash this thing. I think them not having their wind condition is probably good. I wonder if that's what's in the remote server. Uh, we're good with bad publicity, mind you. <laughs> really, really cool. That thing's also like a, an absurd amount of influence, right? It's five. Yeah, okay. So they're probably on a whole bunch of them. I've heard of this deck. The closest we have at home to, uh, what's her name? Vampire Nuts on R&D is really good. That deals with uh, the conduit pressure. Man, the World Tree deck is doing the World Tree thing, which is sick. Here we get rid of Earthrise Hotel. So we don't pin holes, so we actually have to like naturally deal with the thing. We want them to overextend here. Uh, so we're going to get two cards. It's Telework or DZ. I don't think we need the SMC here. So I think we just do Telework, run HQ, trade an Earthrise for an artist, and then play for like late game value. They need to purge at some point. There might be a virus in here. No further. Okay. They can always throw us into Vampir Nasa, which is not that bad. Oh, shit. Should we use Arasana? Uh, arguably. That's okay. We have a, we have a target here. So we'll do knob on the imp. World tree, earth rise into, I think we should have got rid of the Telework. It's fine. We'll do the artist. Do we steal that or do we imp that? We've seen one spit target. We'll steal it. So here they can look at nine. So they can really like save their self. So we have to worry that they're not on a punitive list. Playing five influence. I think they're just on a whole bunch of those five influence cards of the super deeps. It's the first influence we've seen outside of Spin Doctors. So they're probably on two and then some Spin Doctors. So they could be on Punitive. Um, if that's scary, we just hit every single money button we have here, which would be like hit Telework, Dirty Laundry Archives. And so if they have like your digital life into Punitive, Punitive, but it seems unlikely. We also can like run back on HQ and still use our imp. So like Dirty Laundry is a bit scary because if they bump us, like we lose that. So I think they just reordered seven. Which is generally sometimes the most frightening thing because they didn't trash, they didn't draw, so they know how long the game's going to be. And if there's no agendas in there, you just eight more turns of surviving. No discard, one draw. Thank you. Okay, so they drew one card off of it, which makes sense. Yeah, they were on five minus one five. So that could be punitive. So I think we're just going to money up. So we're just going to dirty laundry archives. Telework? So they probably don't have double punitive. The top of R&D, they know the next six cards. We have to remember that. It could be spin doctors here, but they're probably going to play like hedge fund into set up super deep borehole turn. And then like having cards in hand with anabetic is a problem. Like we can lose to borehole very easily. At that point, we like will conduit and set it up. So I think we dirty laundry archives. We've already used most of our run triggers. We could have considered imping that. That might have been right. Oh, there's a Fuji in there. Now we really died a punitive. Uh-oh. Oof, oops. Okay, so they can do six damage to us if they punitive. So we're just gonna hit the biggest money button we have, which is. We've hit that money button. It'll be this money button. So they need to have more than 14 credits and play one punitive. It's totally doable, but they didn't draw in a lot. So your digital life isn't online. What did we lose to that? We lost slap vandal world tree. That seems fine. They drew another subliminal advance advance. Okay. Looks like there's an agenda in there. Could be an NGO front, but they would have pushed it earlier. Ice archives. I think we can deal with this. The thing is that they fire Anoetic once, they can't score at the agenda. So how do we deal with this remote server? We generally need to install the simul chip. We need to pull out, uh, what's it called? And then install a turbine. Uh, using the urban to move at the cube would have been good. If they fire Anoetic once, I think we can definitely do this. Do we have a world tree target here? We have 20 cards left in our stack. We don't have to be that world tree like plugged in. But if we get into here, we win. Unless it's an NGO front of which we've seen none. So second super deep borehole is what they discarded. Oh, super cool. So <laughs> I didn't realize that. So they threw, they have uh, 11 influence showing right now. Uh, and Braun, 12, 13. So maybe they have another two more spin doctors, 5, 10, 11, 12, 13. It's probably only one Braun. Okay, so we have to deal with this. So Thimbleberg is one, no problem. Braun is pretty expensive. Uh, they don't have Ag Infusion on this remote server. So that's okay. So we have to just run this twice, but the Thimble Rig will make an Ag Infusion, so we have to run this three times. So I think we just install Cyberdelia, sorry, Simul Chip, and then we run. This is free. If this is an NGO front, it's fine, because we still threaten out the uh, Anoetic. It could also be a Bio Vault, which would make sense. We want to threaten that before it matters. So this is entirely free uh, because of Cyberdelia. This is a Brawn. Okay, they're going to put that back, so we have to run through that. That's okay, it's only two credits. So here we're going to use the Simul Chip. What are we going to trash? The Cubon? I think the Cubon, because we break this for two regardless. So we'll do Simul Chip, continue approach ice. So we'll continue to counter ice. We'll do Simul Chip. We'll trash the Cubon. We'll install the Turbine for free. And then we break Brawn for four. Where the hell is our Cleaver? 
We don't have a damn cleaver. <laughs> what are you doing, Andre? There's too many programs. Uh, okay, so we might have messed that up. They gave us information here, so if anything, we can rewind the simul chip. It was probably way cheaper here to uh, to run archives or any other central. This was so wrong. This was so absurdly wrong as a turn. We still need to contest this. They need an anoetic once. If we double click through the brawn, uh, the last brawn subroutine will be a problem. Got some info. I might just undo the, uh, the simul chip. Yeah, that was really bad. Yeah, I'm just going to undo the simul chip. Okay, so we have to commit to this. But ideally, if we just make any successful run, Amaku will be on six. They, if they res him a virus, they can't score out. So, so we break this for free. So it's like, it's no big deal. But then we're just going to jack out once we realize what we've done, which was a bad thing. We just need to make them fire this uh, analytic once. So continue to move. They can move the thing over. It's fine. Jack out. Okay. So now we can run R&D in tunnel. I think ideally we want them to res here. We need to get Amakua to six. We can run HQ, which I think is fine. If they trash an ice and put us there, though, that's the issue. Uh, because then we can't do the thing we want to do. But I think running HQ is okay. This has been in here for a while, though. We just need them to spend money. How else do we deal with a brawn? We had slap vandal, so we could have like installed a slap vandal, broke one, double clicked, and then Anoeta keeps us out. It stops them from scoring, but I think this might be a bio vault or an NGO front more than an agenda. Uh, so we've made a run, and we haven't made a successful run. The other option here is like we can run H, we can run R and D, and we can simul chip for. Well, we haven't found an SMC yet. I think we bottomed a bunch of them, but like getting out of Peach's Sean buys us some like window in this. But I think pressuring R and D here is fine. The problem is if we imp something, we don't get Amakua counter, but I think we run R&D, run server two. It's better than running HQ. They know what the top card of the deck is, though. Yeah, that's fine. This is fine. Now, they could throw us here on this server. If that's the case, it's whatever. Oh, man, I totally forgot we didn't have a cleaver. Embarrassing. Super embarrassing. Here, we could also world tree for a cleaver. Uh, like, we could simul chip. Yeah, okay. So this is a play. So then we want to break this thing. Uh, this thing, we break for two. Once we pass it, we get two back. Okay, so we'll jack out here. We have one more run to make. Can we do with the brawn? So if we simul chip for it, no. So I think if anything, we run R&D here. We haven't used the knob Kree, so we could simul chip for, again, we can't pull the conduit because we just haven't found it. I think we just run R&D here. They know what the top of the deck is. They use their ability here. If they score out, that's kind of fine because they go down to one credit and we can just kind of like run shop. Uh, let's go for it. They can fire a snare. Here they should maybe move the thimble rig away. Depends what they're doing. So world tree. What do we have instead of the telework? Urban art vernissage is pretty okay. We have some more installing to do. Not a lot more to do. Uh, in terms of other stuff, we've played. There's one more cast, so it's probably the cast, right? Yeah. I think we put it on the Amakua so that we can trash with the imp. It's a Rashida. I don't think we want them to draw the Rashida. I think using the imp counter is totally fine. Now we're at six. So they could score out here or they could just set up a bio vault. Maybe the Rashida was not bad because it just goes to hand here. If they score on an agenda, I think we're relatively okay with it unless it's a four two. Okay, cool. So they got to do this again. So they have currently have five cards in hand, but they're down to one credit. So this is where we need to draw a lot. There's actually a chance that we should have gone for Nuka so that we have a bigger chance of finding an SMC. Now, mind you, every time that we do this, we shuffle the deck so the class act like it gets a bit messed up. But they're on one credit. I think this turn we, we can test the server because they can't fire Anoetic. We have to trash what we assume is a Bio Vault or the Mavirus before it matters. So it looks like they drew one and then trashed one and then reordered the top six. So we have a lot of work to do right now. This we break for one. This we break for three. Okay. So I think it was trash one, draw one. No trash, draw one. Oh, yeah, that's the ice. Thank you. It's so weird that JNet doesn't show you that. Okay, so we need to flush this out sooner than later so they don't have a scoring remote server. They could have a 2-1 in their deck, right? Like, they can't score in next turn. Um, so we want to flush this out. That's some a virus. We want to see it sooner. No, not really. Then we could, I think we draw once. Found the cleaver. Good. <laughs> I honestly don't know if we draw. We probably do. So let's run server two and deal with this so they don't have a scoring remote as much as they'll have ice. So this will break. Uh, this is cheaper. 
this is cheaper eventually once we pull out our thing, which we should maybe with Simulchip, we should pull out our, uh, our, our breaker, our turbine. We don't need the world tree that much. Continue. Man, world tree is so fun. Uh, break for three. Breach server. We'll hit world tree. What would we get here? We could trash the imp for a conduit. That's pretty cool. It's kind of neat. This is tricky. I think the imp for the conduit's fine, but I think we want to use the imp here. Let's not use the world tree. Uh, simul chip? No. Okay, so virus counter, we'll put it on the imp. Six is a lot. So we'll access this first. We'll trash for one. To buy a vault, I think we won't imp that. I think we want to imp whatever's in HQ. Install telework, hit telework's okay, but we haven't used the imp. Let's run HQ. If they throw us into the bumper nuts, I think it's fine. We have Peach's Sean in her deck that actually is worth something. So they might use their Ag Infusion here. Yeah, they did. Okay. So we're going to hit this thing. Uh, could we take two damage? We honestly could. I'll just break for two. We don't have that much money. We'll jack out there. And now we can run HQ. Teeny will imp that. Not that they can use it. Okay. Um, we just need to, I think we need to threaten our win condition sooner because we're like playing into the mid to late game. Like the super late game, we eventually run out. Like what? Oh, mindscaping. Nice. So they went through one, two, three, four, minus one. So there's still another next three. Double mindscaping. It's just, just a panic, right? Like it, it's not very good on card draw because you keep drawing the same dang card. But now they're on six, which means they can res a teeny and stuff like that. Daily cast. Okay. So we want to make a run. We probably run R&D here. They know the top card of the deck. We could run HQ. We're worried about them taking an agenda from here, putting in their mode server. We're more worried about them purging. If we find him a virus, we're actually in a pretty bad spot. We haven't seen one so far. So we can run HQ, telework, hit telework. If they throw us into this, it's fine. It's a one credit and they trade a nice for one credit. Okay. I think moving around the coupon is interesting. It's just hard into Ag Infusion. So we'll do breach server. We won't world tree. We won't world tree, I don't think. No, I don't think we do. Anansi, I guess it's gone. Gotta get rid of something. So we'll do telework, hit telework artist, just to get our money up. And then next turn, the daily cast becomes something. I don't know how much more card draw we have. I think it's mostly Nuka's, which, yeah, we played every Earthrise. But they're still drawing into known stuff. They're on a 2-1, right? Like, it's just clot. Second ice, that's really good. That means we have to run this server twice. That being said, they just turned off their Ag Infusion ability. Uh, it's probably Rashida. I don't think we have to run that unless they're on like a 3-2. I think here we just like go to Conduit, but then they Thimble Rig it in the Brawn. So like it's a hard thing to commit to this soon. So it'd probably be like we have to get the cube on on the Brawn, so we end up breaking it for one credit. So what do we do? We know nothing about their hand. We've trashed everything we've come in contact with. This costs us three. This costs us one. This costs us a click. On four, there's not a lot of ice they can res we're worried about. I think maybe contesting this to deny Rashida is something. Uh, denying a bio vault is also kind of important. I think here, we probably draw once. The daily cast will actually become a Nuka. Uh, that's probably important. I think we run RD for a single. I think at this point, they've almost broken lock, if not broken lock. I need to note take a bit here. But they turned off their Ag Infusion ability. I just want to get a conduit down. How do we do that? Let's draw into a, a thing. Yeah, okay. So we can do Slap Vandal into conduit. That's going to be scary for them. So we can run R&D. We can break for one. We can install a slap handle from a hand. We can world tree it, which means this daily cast is going to go, but that's fine. We could use some money. We don't have that many good resources. So we'll run R&D. Let's see what they do with this because we respond after they move it. And if they move it too soon, like they probably don't move it this turn, then we can get another easy conduit run. Uh, we'll break for one. It's free. One cyber daily is pretty good. This has made us a lot of money. I hate the fact that we're like incentivized to play as many late game cards and hope. Okay, that's cool. So here we're going to do Ari, install a slap bundle for free. We're going to put it wherever. We're going to breach server. We're going to world tree to get rid of the slap bundle, to get rid of the slap bundle. We're going to get a conduit for one credit. We're going to place a virus counter on it using Knob Kree. Roughneck repair squad. Oh, cool. Um, I think we'll imp that. Place one. Now we can go back. If they spend any amount of money on this, we're happy with it. They can throw us into the thimble rig, which is fine. But now they got a problem on their hands. Unless they have a virus, which is still a problem. It's a tattoo bola. 
Do they have ice in their hand? Because we could always just bounce on this run HQ, but I don't think they have. I don't think they have ice. This sees a lot of cards though, so maybe they'll get some money off of this. Do they have ice? No. <laughs> Read server. Send a message. That'll do it. Good game. Oof. Yeah, we get our whole engine. We get the full like all the pieces out of it. Oh, that's turn 16, 43 minutes. Long ass game for sure. And we we're struggling. We made some mistakes here, but you see like the engine that goes into mid to late game. It gives you a lot of flexibility. And I think that's a hard thing is understanding when to transition to like pressure off central stuff like that. Uh, we have a lot of options. It's very, very cool into anything that's slightly slower. Even the fast matchups, right? Like you just destroy your board and hopefully that keeps up. I like this a lot. This is really cool. I think we're at the point where we could consider getting rid of the world tree too, right? Like what's left in our stack is Pichachon. Plongi was always an option we could get, but we bought most of our SMC. I think it was actually worth drawing an SMC at some point in that game, just so we have SMC simul chip for a panic. Because every time we drew one, we bought him with the class act. I think discarding extra SMCs was totally fine. We just got to keep using our heap. All right, I've been grinding some of this Arisana list, World Tree. Uh, I've been playing it against a lot of stuff. My brain is kind of mush. Uh, and not again, I was kind enough. I asked if uh, he would be able to play PD because I just haven't played into any like general stage B yet. So see how it goes. Now, this is a tempting hand because we have World Tree, but we don't have any targets for World Tree. Uh, so I think we actually end up mulliganing this, right? Like I, we have the money. The thing is like, what do you do turn one? Like you draw credit, credit, creative. Next turn, you could maybe do World Tree. It's like so dependent that we top deck a resource. It's wild not to keep this hand, right? Like it has World Tree in it, but I'm pretty sure you don't keep this because unless you top deck like a cheap resource, we're not going to do anything in the mulligan. That's not a bad hand. Like that's not a bad hand at all. Maybe against HPPD, which has to be really fast. Uh, we have to like just get the world tree as soon as possible. I would really like to have a slap vandal just so we can face check. Some of the ice in this matchup is really hard. Like magnet, difficult. Uh, face checking into with a world tree, face checking into a hogan, huge problem. But we got a good start here. There you go. Never punished. Oh, what a sick hand. So I think here we're going to do, we can do sure gamble cast creative. Oh, hey, Nana. She wants her dinner. That's for sure. The other option is we, no, that's the option. Hey, friend. Sure gamble, cast, creative. What a start. And then we're going to world tree this in a couple turns. That's kind of what you want. Nana, you want to play some world tree? You like Shaper, right? She doesn't like Shaper. She really doesn't like Shaper. Single advance. Okay, so the question is, can we get through that? And with Arasana, it can be really tricky. You're expecting this to be a magnet. So what we could do is we could run this, drop world tree, run archives, trade the Peach Sean will install clicklessly, run the remote server, because this is an off-world office. Show us what you got. Don't show us an MIC, though. Border control. Cool. So we technically have priority on the res. It's totally fine. Um, I think we just bounce off of this. So this is probably an off-world office. We need to deal with this. This is as fast as it gets. So if we drop world tree, run archives, or even run any central largely, I think that's actually it. Like we drop world tree, we run HQ. If they res, they probably can't score out. If he reses, he probably can't score out. We get absolutely blown out by Hagen. Like, there's no way around that. But if we do World Tree, run HQ, drop the Peach of Sean, we can trade the Peach of Sean for a Slap Vandal. Then we'll have two clicks left. We can run the Border Control Steal. This is such a high variance play, but we're going to do it. So we have to go first. Oh, this is an aggressive, cool line. So now, how bad is this for us? No action. Oh, no. We gain a click. Arisana, target for World Tree. We'll trash the Pichachon. I think we'll get a Cleaver. We steal an Elevagao. We run server one. We break for one. What was his turn? Uh, what? That was the sickest Netrunner turn I've ever done. I'm sorry. That, I know, I know. So blown out by Hagen or Magnet, or like, whatever. Okay, that was cool. I don't think he has a seamless. I think here we just draw. Oh man, that's why I play Shaper. That's amazing. That's really, really, really cool. Draw, draw, board control is not safe anymore. He doesn't have a lot of money. So here we want to pressure HQ again. Pretty sure if that was a Hagen, he might've rezzed. So luckily with Cleaver, we can deal with the Hagen. Uh, we're gonna use the daily cast soon. So we want to trade something out. Uh, this is not what we want to trade out. We can always trade SMC for like an imp and get some pressure. We have the knob Korean hand. So that's something. But again, Zenny could have scored that out. I'm not sure how, uh, but I'm worried. Now he has some sort of trick in hand. So ideally we get something that we want to world tree. That'll probably be next turn. So I don't think we have to do that much. Uh, he doesn't really, he played one hedge fund so far. We don't want to blunder into like a, a drafter. So I think we're just going to draw up a bit. 
get down to daily casts. This daily cast next turn will become an Earthrise Hotel, or sorry, more likely a class act. And then we'll go from there. Uh, I think that's okay that we just install this click for credit because like we have a lot of range of threat here because Will Tree SMC becomes any breaker. Uh, and then let's see what happens. I love a guy with strange. This is not a list I thought it'd be. Isengard Archives is clever. We can still run this for one. We probably do. And I think we get an imp. I think we do get an imp here. The other question is we run this for one. So this is more likely a Managarma Tranquility. We ideally want to imp the Tranquility. So if that's the case, we can either get rid of this daily cast for a class act and we can check what this is. This is Tranquility, we really want to slow Nodigan down. Now he's gone through, uh, what is it, 12 cards, we've seen two agendas, and the density of this deck is probably a bit higher than one in five if it's running Elevagaus. This might also suggest it's on more Ikawas, uh, but we have to figure out how to navigate this. Because we can run this break for one, uh, install SMC from hand, trade SMC into Imp, so it's a totally free Imp. Uh, that's nice. We don't get to get rid of this daily cast, but we can get rid of the next daily cast. I think we might just appreciate two credits here. Let's try once. Yeah, I think we trash this if it's a uh, trank. Let's run everyone. Break. So this is why you do our Asana, mind you. You get our Asana at the SMC. Oh, wait, we have an MU problem. Oh, shit. Never mind. I goofed this up pretty bad. I guess we'll get rid of the daily cast. So it'll breach the server. Daily cast will become an Earthrise, which, sorry, the daily cast will become a class act, which means we shouldn't have drawn this turn because we just ate the filter draw. So I misplanned the turn. I forgot we had an MEU problem. MEU is kind of tight in this deck. Uh, so I think we'll get the class act here. It's a Trank Grid. I think we will trash it. It's really important. Ideally, we would have imped that. We'd love to imp that. And we'll just do credit credit. We're going to draw four more cards. Yeah, we needed something like a creative there. Bummer to draw both Earthrises. We'd like to, you know, have those back in the deck. But Spin Doctor Start, not again here, really needs an economy piece like a greasing or hedge fund. Hey, Nana. She wants to play Shaper. It's a tree. You like climbing trees. You're a cat. Cats love trees, right? Okay, so seamless threat here on the remote server is real. So six credits. Uh, we have an MU problem still. The Nobakuri doesn't exactly help. Oh, she's down in my lap. Okay, well, this is going to be tricky. How do we deal with this? We can also get a Parisha for free. So the problem is, again, the MU. If we do one draw here, we see two cards, but we want to dump a couple cards from our hand here if we can. So I don't think we really want to check this again. There's a chance another Tranquility. I don't think it's going to be anything really important, like a Rashida. Might be a Mavirus, just something that baits a run. And it's in my lap. You can't see her. She's going to be upset when I don't pay too much attention to her. So how do we develop here? I think we definitely do the Creative Commission. We might just take a turn off here and do like, like we don't need two SMCs, I don't think. So we could do our Earthrise Creative that drops us down to seven cards. Throw out an SMC, throw out an Earthrise credit. Like that's fine. Next turn, we definitely need the uh, Arasana trigger, uh, the World Tree trigger. So I think we will do that. So we'll throw out two cards. Don't need a second SSC. This Earthrise Hotel, we're not going to stall. And now we're looking through three cards a turn. Oh, wow, it is a Rashida. I'm super surprised by that. Maybe his hand's really bad because that's like a real desperate play. I don't think it was like too unbelievable that we would check that for one to get a World Tree, uh, especially if we had like a dirty laundry. I guess maybe I don't think you trade a boarding control for a dirty laundry. Uh, but yeah, wow, that Rashida's really good for him. A lot of cards in hand. Imp on HQ also deals with seamlesses, which is really good. Uh, but we're just going to try and say we'll go fast. Here he needs to do install and remote server second ice. There you go. Whoa, okay. So running HQ here. He didn't discard anything. There's agendas in HQ for sure. So drafter is the bad thing. Uh, well, we definitely want to run here. We don't need the second world tree. That's for sure. So here we can run HQ. Worst comes to worst, we still have an MU problem. So like if we SMC with the trash one of our cards. So we face check into this and it's a hog and we break it uh, and we can install the cube on and go through. If it's a magnet or a gatekeeper, that's a problem because we have to trash one of our stuff. So we just haven't found an MU card yet. I think we can consider running the spin doctor. He'll probably crack it, which is fine. Um, he'll probably shuffle back the hedge funds, which is fine thinking. But I think we can face check here into HQ and hope it's not the worst. If it is worst case a drafter, like we can install the echelon. It'll have it's still very expensive to break. I think we need to make a run here on HQ. I think the dirty laundry is a bit much because the chance of it being a magnet or a gatekeeper is actually relatively, uh, it's relatively common. So we need an MU card. So I think we're just going to be in a holding pattern. Run server two, if he doesn't trash, we don't. Daily cast becomes something. So he has to get rid of that for sure. Oh, fine in. Um, so here we have seven cards in hand. Just MU is a bit tight. I think we can throw out the conduit. We'll find a simul chip before it matters. So let's just run HQ. No whammies. He shuffled back. Trank. Okay, and hedge fund. It's nice to keep a trank sometimes. It's a brawn. Oh, huge res here. Okay. So we can click through one of the subroutines if we really want to. I don't think we have a huge incentive to. That's a lot of money up front. Again, there's a lot of agendas probably in HQ. So Turbine Cleaver is the best we have to break this, which is still four. It's not nothing. Uh, but with Cubon, it's two. That's pretty good. 
So here, I think we actually can just dump the cube on from our hand. We don't have a, a way to like recur through this yet. We can double click. I don't think we double click. I think we run archives. I think we just force a bunch of reses. Actually, I shouldn't have of that. Nothing to see. <laughs> yeah, we're just gonna let that fire. And then ideally we're gonna pressure archives. We can also run server one. Like if something's resed here, it's unlikely to be that bad for us. Okay, so no install, that's good to know. Um, so we can run this. I think we have to run archives and force a res there. Like this has a big chance of being a drafter. It's a nice enough thing to put in archives. It's just annoying. Uh, but that means we get in, which means we can trade the daily cast into another daily cast. Uh, it also could just be a magnet, which if he reses that, it's fine. It's expensive. So we'll run this. We have to cube on now. I think we will. So I'll cube on this action. I'll cube on that. So we're just going to give ourselves a click. Just incentivize the res. Uh, just to put some pressure on. So now he really wants to res it, but if he reses it, he doesn't have a lot of uh, stuff going for him on top of this board. No further. Sick. So this means we get our two credits. We can trade the daily cast into something else. Uh, there's a chance the artist is okay, but I think we have enough card draw coming in. The artist is like kind of cool because we have a lot of things we need to click to install. The biggest thing here though is we just want to draw into uh, an MU card. Daily cast is probably the easiest to play on most board states. So I think we'd consider it. If we can consider running back. It's a click for two credits. We could dirty laundry back. If he res his last click, I don't think he does. Maybe on a dirty laundry he does, because that's a seven credit run to stop. Otherwise, I think we just get down the knob. Curry will be on nine next turn. That's enough. Now, this is MU for viruses, which doesn't help with SMC. It only helps with a couple cards in the deck. But we have to be ready for pushing remotes or regolith. Okay, very good. We need to contest that. Uh, Earthrise, let's find an MU card. Not like that. The Cuban also now, our MU is really full. Slap Metal is good. Uh, sure gamble is good. Simul chip. What do we have access to? Peach is on ISMC. I'd rather have the simul chip, I think. Okay, so he's not doing anything any time too fast, so we can continue just to set up. We don't have to run this turn unless we want to make the earth rise into something, which we definitely could. So we could do sure gamble, install simul chip, run archives. Uh, if he doesn't res here, earth rise becomes another earth rise. If he reses here, he spent money. Now on 10, he probably can spend money. It was an Eli. Okay, that's actually sick. Uh, cause we break that for one reach server world tree earth rise will become another earth rise. We're just doing a thing. Uh, we just want to keep the card, the good times rolling. And I think here we'll click for a credit. The simul chip mind you gives us access to, well, still MU issues. Maybe we need another cyber dealie in the deck. There's just so many times where we're like, we're stuck in the early game. There's four MU cards in 35. So we'll get there. He's on 13 with regolith and an upgrade. So we'll draw an MU card here for sure. Right? Yeah. Nailed it. Okay. We have the imp. We have the diesel. We don't really need the diesel. The DZ opens up good pressure here. So with the DZ, the problem is with, like, with the Cuban, we need to trade this daily cast into an urban art vernissage to get this thing back. We don't have a huge trigger here. Now we can do DZ. We definitely install the DZ. What do we else do? We can dirty laundry this, which costs two credits, and then we can get an Arasana trigger. With the Arasana trigger, we can install something from hand. We have the knob Kari down. So getting the imp down costs one credit. I think there's a chance that we could do like imp turbine run HQ because there's definitely agendas there and he's going to push next turn. I think that's the smartest play by a mile. So we'll do imp. We'll do turbine, which clogs our MU again. Don't worry about it. No big deal. And then we'll dirty laundry HQ. Uh, we don't use the world tree this turn. We break this for four. We would love to get. There's actually a chance that we trade the daily cast preemptively. I realized, didn't realize that was credit perfect, but we trade the. Uh, Proactively to move around the cube on. So Nob Curry goes on the imp. We're probably going to steal an agenda here. If it's a uh, Ikoa, we can imp it. Choose a target for World Tree. Mind if I do? Nah, no. So it looks like we're going to have a different line here. Run HQ. Okay. So something's going to happen here. So we're going to break this for four. Is there a Forma carry? Is he going to Mavirus? Purging the Mavirus doesn't do anything. What was the undo? Breach server? Oh. oh okay. So there's a Forma carry here. We want to go through this. We take two damage. It puts these in the bin, which is actually easier for simul chip. So I'm going to let this fire just because it's a dirty laundry run and an imp knob curry run. So we'll take the damage. It's good that this is here and we don't have to deal with mana karm. So we'll take two net. Uh, worst card to keep, I think. If we died a snare. <laughs> we died a snare in HB. Okay, so we'll do knob curry on this. So we haven't trashed a program here. Do we want to wheel tree daily cast to pull the cube on back? I think we need the money. I think we'll ignore it this turn. 
It's an on-sell. We'll go ahead and imp that. Got him something. Well, I'll be on five credits. Okay, so next turn, he's still going to jam their mode server. With 11 credits, the outermost, I'm not sure what he's going to res, but at least one form of carry down. That's a Tranquility, not even a Mana Garm. What have we seen so far? So now we have to run that. That's probably an agenda. We've gone through 24 cards. We've seen two agendas advance. Okay, so this is probably a Gatekeeper. Uh, we're going to try and slap bandle through that. Daily casts. Overclock, Telework, Nuka. Probably should consider that. We have enough card draw here. We have a really big World Tree turn because of two targets are going to empty. So we overclock this. We can deal with the outermost. The question is what happens if it's actually, you know, something we have to break from hand. So we have no slap vandal in the bin. And I'm doing a bad job, I think, of taking cards and discarding them on purpose to use with the simul chip. Like I bottomed them. And I think having access to a slap vandal would actually be good. So if we overclock this server, we're over 2 MU. So we can always trash the imp, install the SMC from hand. I think we just challenge this. It has to be agenda. The problem is like the outermost, it's that's a tier, right? Like this has to be a tier. It has to be something nonsense. <laughs> so I think we probably still just run it. First click. If it's a gatekeeper res, we can always kind of deal with it. We can overclock this if we need to. We can do telework, hit telework, and then overclock the server. At any point in time, too, we can just like pivot to R&D conduit. I think we'll go for this. We have to jack out if it's a form of carry unless we want to install our thing. Uh, no action. So we have 13 credits to deal with. MIC. Oh, cool. So how do we deal with an MIC? We probably have to trash our board a bit. We're gonna have to run through this twice. We break MSC for two credits. Mind you, on the run back, if he trashes all of this, we're not gonna get in. So we probably have to produce a buzzsaw. How do we do that? Uh, one way involves a successful run with World Tree. Uh, that would be the cheaper way, where we install the SMC, trash the cube on it, and the imp, probably. The other way, there's the sword, um, is, well, we have an echelon in the bin. That doesn't do it. We could tank off of this. We probably don't want to. I think we need to get through this at all costs. The other option is like install SMC from hand and then break the end of the run subroutine. That means we lose two clicks. So he trades either the border control or the MIC for it, probably the border control. So I think here we probably install the SMC from hand, trashing imp and cubon, SMC. It eats the DZ trigger. We install for five. Best we got. Oh, that actually doesn't fix our MU. Wait a second. Imp doesn't really fix our MU. We have to go back. Because Imp is on the Nob Korea MU. Shit. So do we trash the world tree? Or do we just like bounce here? MU is tough. So if they score out an off-world office, it is what it is. We're going to be able to deal with the server sooner than later. I think we might just let this fire and then run R&D. If this is like an Ikoa seamless, that's the happiest we are. We could also just trash the world tree. We have 31 cards left in our stack. Like In terms of the world tree, what else are we interested in getting? So the artist is like something worth pulling abstractly. We've played all daily casts. We played every Earthrise Hotel. So it's actually not that valuable anymore. We could consider getting rid of it and then just using SMCs to get our last breakers. So if that's the case, we trash the world tree, install this. I think we do that. I think this is totally fine. So SMC from hand. This, we pay. We'll get the buzzsaw. We'll break for two. Break for one. We still threaten an imp knob career. Yeah, I think this is a good enough time to transition out of the greed engine. And that's a really important skill with this sort of deck is like figuring out when it makes sense or not. If he trashes this, we still get in unless he trashes all his ice. And then he trades two points for an entire scoring server for the rest of the game, which like, I don't think that's a good trade. We'll see what he has to do here. We really want to get the cube on moving around. Yeah, this is tricky. This is tricky. Mind you, like this is our board state on turn... Okay, that's a long turn because we have to mess that up. On turn nine, like that's something. Only I didn't misplay turn one. I'm excited to hear what that is. So I think we're going to run back, make him spend everything. We have money coming in. So if he trashes the MIC, we can't lose a click. So we're going to end the run. So he scores that out. We can deal with the tranquility. Seamless. It's an Ikawa. Oh, that's the best case for us. Okay, so let's see what he brings back. So we still kept our simul chip, so we can get like simul chip into trash cube on into conduit and try and close the game out. So seamless is back in hand, but he has no scoring remote. Gonna get some value from the tranquility, so we're gonna definitely deal with that. Earthrise Hotel, draw three, bottom one. Uh, this is the end of our card draw, so I value Nuka. Cyberdelia, we just talked about how that's kind of a thing we want. It means we break, e break Eli for free, but we don't really have a reason to run archives. I don't think we need the Cyberdelia anymore. Okay, I think we do Nuka. 
Hit Nuka. We're trying to look for uh, Dirty Laundry. There's a whole bunch in the deck still. Nope. Uh, Parisha doesn't trash Tranquility. We also could transition to Amakua. That might be fine. Place one virus count on Imp. We'll Imp this first one. There's no way that this card costs more than four. Some of virus there. That's the right order. So we'll trash that. It clears the Imp for now. Uh, so we can either Telework or Creative. We'll do the Creative for sure. Uh, so in 25 cards, and which we know a couple of the bottom because we shuffled after the SMC at least. So we only know one of the bottom. Uh, he still has to build a whole remote server. Like we have to run archives. We have to run HQ. Running HQ again. This is, uh, what is it? Four. This is, well, we don't have a way to break that just yet. Slap Vandal will be there. Nuka. All right. Urban important. Artist. I think a bit too slow, but that's fine. Amaku is really good. So Gatekeeper we can deal with. We can't deal with sentries though. So if it is a drafter, it's a bit ugly. So I think we take a turn off here and just continue to set up because we are controlling the remote server, which is what he needs to score out. So we'll do telework, inst uh, install urban, install telework. I'm still in the mindset we have to run every turn, which kind of with Knob Cree Imp we do, but ideally we're running HQ. We have to deal with the mana arms before the form carries pop off. He has 18 cards left in R&D. We've only seen five points. Like HQ is probably massively flooded. We just really need to get the cube on on the brawn to feel a bit better about it. Uh, Echelon, mind you, is in here, so we'll like install the Slap Vandal and then just... Well, we won't get rid of it. We could have ran there, actually, to install the Slap Vandal for DZ to get two credits. Well, now we're running Archives. This is where the HB decks can just, like, slow down a bit. Like, if you don't get the early tempo... Like, scoring out Aqua early is always so bad for your tempo. So the Simul Chip gets us access to Conduit, which can just close the game out. It gets us access to Echelon, which is necessary, and the Echelon will break all the sentries relatively cheaply, even on sell. So discard four cards. Okay. Urban will return that. So I think we just run archives, install Cubon. We know there's a virus in there, so we don't really need to get the Amakua unless we steal or don't steal. Um, getting Amakua up is not that important considering our breaker suite. Like this is a bit late. So we definitely check archives. Getting the Cubon in there is fine. It means we don't check HQ this turn. So Arsana. Cuban on here. It eats our DZ trigger. Break for one. Gain two. We actually could gain money on this massively if we had a uh, Cyber Deli as well. There might be agendas in here. Fire scanner on the imp. It'll get purged. I'll have a Gao. Okay, so we're on game point. A virus. Threw out Gatekeeper, which we break for four. I think a Rashida. Okay, so we just want to continue to set up, right? So. We want to, we've already used our Asana. I think we actually just installed the Parisha, so we have something to trade to the DZ. So I think we'll, we haven't done a draw yet, so we get the filter draw. Okay. And then we'll just install the Parisha. Uh, next turn, we'll trade that with Simul Chip into an Angolo, or sorry, to the Echelon, uh, and then run HQ. Server 4, Spin Doctor. Okay, so we have to contest the serve, this or the remote server. 12 cards off an R&D. This is, we just need to go in for the pressure. We, I don't know, it's so hard with the last influence slot in the deck. There's probably Formicary somewhere, which means we have to pay for double mana garden because we can't. We just need to hoard money and run early because we can't uh, have any way to deal with the Formicaries. So we'll contest that. Take clicks, return this to hand. So we don't pay to install cards no more. Uh, we'll run server four first. Gonna crack that. We break it for free. And then we can run server three. We'll get an imp. I don't think there's anything we have to do here. I don't think we do the cube on this. I think we do the cube on the brand. Uh, no action. The drafter. Okay, cool. So this is what we set up for. We'll still simul chip for the Prisha. Uh, we'll get down the echelon. We break for two. We could break for zero. I don't think he's going to overinstall the drafter, so I think we can just get away with doing this. We did in the good order. That means that we don't lose the DZ. It's, Urban Art's going to pay for it, so it's fine. Uh, fully break drafter. We'll get two back. We'll charge the imp. Trash this. This will be a tranquility. Yep. Uh, we definitely need to be running HQ. What did he shuffle back? Probably two face downs, right? Yeah, two unseen. So now running R&D is reasonable. We have our whole rig, so we're not often punished by anything. Uh, so we can get down Simul Chip and produce a conduit and then just run R&D. And this will close the game out. We've used our knob curry here, so no res. So that's probably a form of carry. So we'll Simul Chip. We'll get down a conduit for free. Reach. Spin Doctor. We'll trash that put that. So next he's forked on two things. He doesn't have a scoring server and eventually we'll see cards. Now he does have a lot of agendas in HQ. For what it's worth, the conduit might be an overextension. It was relatively cheap for us. Regolith. Okay, we'll deal with that. It's cost us nothing. Uh, take clicks. 
Urban Art will return that. Uh, we'll draw for Filter Draw. Sign chip is okay. So we'll run Server 3. Did we imp that? Yeah, I don't think we're in a rush to Conduit. So we'll Arasana. So now we're just doing like the close the game dance. Break for two, get two back. Place fires counter on the imp. Uh, we imp it. We could have paid three actually. We have the money. Maybe we should just put it on the conduit or just imp whatever we see on RD. That's probably a bit better. And then we'll run RD. Uh, you need a brawn here or something really big, a drafter. Okay. Uh, we have a peach of somewhere eventually we can get. So we'll break that for two. See an off world, steal. Managarm will definitely trash that. So we could go back for uh, two new cards. I think that seems reasonable. Next turn we can click 3-3 three, three, and then overclock. So we'll just go back. Wonder if the Cubon should have been there because we're going to run this multiple times. We probably should have got the Cubon on there. I think that's incorrect where we placed this because we knew we would run this multiple times. Well, depending on what we stole or trash. Managarm can't deal with that hedge fund. Oh, beans, tranquility. So they have the Managarm. I think that the points in hand. I think we, there's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There might not be more agendas in R&D. I think actually that was a bad run because we couldn't even steal Ikoa. So we know he has a mana garm. Yeah, I think that was an overextension. We might get punished. He has a lot of work to do to score out though. Okay, so that's mana garm. That's a form of carry. So we can't hush it. So all we want to do is run, spend two clicks, run back. So I don't think we need to bounce this. Well, it's free. So that's all we got is run server three, break this for free, pay two clicks, then we'll get five, run back. I think we're credit short. We can take the damage though. No, we can just overclock it. So we'll just run this server three. Arasana. Slap, uh, sorry, Cubon on here. We can also just tunnel centrals. Uh, we'll break for two, which is free. Really want that Cyberdelia. So he'll res the mana garm. We'll spend two clicks. So this is the interaction, we'll spend two clicks. Now he can do the form of carry. So here, we don't have two clicks or five credits, so uh, we'll let that fire, we'll end the run, and then we just overclock back in. So if we overclock back in, we'll have six credits. Uh, this is free, this is one, then we have five and we can steal. Server three, fully break for two, one, two, make money, form of carry. Uh, we could actually take the damage. I don't think it's worth it. We have more than enough money. Uh, break for one. Well, yeah, we could take the damage. So we'll pay five. This leaves us with nothing, which is fine because we can imp. So we'll access the agenda. ADT. Good game. Yeah, we were in control. We probably should have closed the game out from HQ, but we played a bit of a, uh, you know, lockdown. Thanks for the game. That early, uh, <laughs> that early game was wild. What was the line that was missed? I know there's a line at the beginning, not again said, that they had access to. I think if they res the HQ ice, maybe there's something. I forgot I could res a form of carry still square since you had one card in hand. Oh, get out. So if there's a form of carry, we had to bounce off of it. That was the line. Oh, really cool. So the form of carry, I think, was on uh, central, right? So he could have moved it over. Maybe it was on HQ. We definitely didn't play around form of carry. That being said, like, besides the hogging that blew us out, that was a really, really, really good opening. Thanks for gaming. Thanks again. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I had so much fun putting this together and it's just a bummer after one afternoon recording all those games. I know I'm gonna be better at the deck. It's gonna run smoother. We're gonna make some better changes to Cyberdelia minimum. Uh, and it's just gonna be a lot of fun. I haven't played this one in person just yet. I'm gonna go to the Tuesday Night Casuals and try it out. We'll see how much shuffling you have to do, but I know there's gonna be so many of these Arasana World Tree decks. I'm gonna convince myself I can spend five influence on this. Why not? And it's gonna be cool. It's cool that we found a runner that's basically just op again, and then, you know, we just want to play that a lot. But of course, a huge thank you to all these names here and more. The Metropolitan Grid, we are entirely supported by Patreon. These are the names of the Sure Gamble, the Green Mill patrons. Of course, there's a whole bunch of also daily cast patrons that support the channel. Gives me the time to do the editing, the capturing, the recording, the testing, all this sort of nonsense that happens to make a video of, unfortunately, this length. And I'm incredibly appreciative. If you're considering supporting the channel, links to Patreons below and any amount of support is absolutely appreciated. Speaking of patrons, shout out to Eric Hyden, who gave me the name Tech Tree for this deck, which I think is fantastic. Thank you. Appreciate that heck a lot. I think it's quite cute. On that note, happy running. It's been a while since we've done Deck Dive. We'll be doing some more soon. We should have some new cards coming out too, which is pretty exciting. But um, yeah, maybe we'll be grinding Shaper for a while. Who knows? Thanks so much for watching. See you in a bit.